Good evening, everyone. I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Harper Springs on Tuesday, December 7th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Ms. Jacobs, roll call, please. Pamela, who's this? Here. Vice Mayor Carr? Here. Commissioner Terrapani? Here. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Commissioner Vatikios? Here. The invocation will be given by Reverend Janet Tunnel from the All Saints Episcopal Church, following by the Pledge of Allegiance, if you please stand. Good evening, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel for the renewal and mission of the city of Tarpon Springs. Teach them in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide them to perceive what is right and grant them both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please be advised that at 7.30, the public hearing portion of the meeting must start. Once the public hearing portion is completed, we will continue the meeting from where we left off. Also, I'd like to uh, remind to everyone that based on the city rules and procedures, all public comments must be directed only to the chair of the meeting in a professional manner with respect, without a personal attacks. Also, cheering and clapping is not allowed during the uh, debate, and I want to thank you for your cooperation. And now we're going to go to the public comments on the items that will not be discussed this evening. If anybody has any comments, please come forward to the podium. State your name and your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. Hi, Craig Lunt, 743 Chesapeake Drive, Tarpon Springs, Florida, 34689. Um, I just wanted to congratulate and thank the city staff for the incredible and well-attended snow plays and boat parades. Um, by Saturday, you could already see that it occurred. The cleanup was so quick and thorough. It was just an excellent job all the way around. So kudos to them. Um, I also attended the Christmas tree lighting at the sponge docks on Saturday. Uh, had a memorable time and wanted to publicly thank the new owners of the Sponge Exchange, Nick and Patty Kokinos, for continuing to welcome everybody throughout the evening with food and refreshments. Uh, the truly a class act, and I can't uh, wait to see the new renovations they're planning. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Hi, I'm Nancy Subic, 334 East Orange Street, Tarpon Springs, Florida, 34689, known as the Pinder House. Good evening and thank you for allowing me to address you on this matter of interest to many in the community. It has come to my attention that Tarpon Springs has a sign ordinance concerning yard and garage sale signs. In the economic times that we live, many people find it helpful to dispose of things via these types of sales to make a little extra money to compensate for inflation. As, many, as some of you may know, to have a successful sale, one must have directional signs to lead a potential customer to the sale. <clears throat> signs for those that live off the beaten path need to be strategically placed to attract buyers. <clears throat> Last year I had a garage sale. I live one block off Tarpon Avenue and placed my signs on the road easement. <clears throat> they weren't placed on power poles and did not block traffic, but a code enforcement officer collected my directional signs and followed those same signs to come to my house and tell me that I was in violation of the sign ordinance. I have no problem with obtaining a permit. It is the sign code in which I question. How is a person to find a sale if the seller isn't permitted to place directional signs? I place my signs the night before the sale and remove them promptly after the sale is over. I ask you to review your ordinance on this sign code. Not only, is I, not only did I lose $45 in purchased signs, but basically my sale was unsuccessful due to people not being able to find me. Presenting a problem without a solution is just another problem. 
So my proposal on this matter would be as follows. Number one, obtain your permit costing $5 up from $2 to account for inflation. Number two, allow to place signs to direct you to the sale. Number three, these signs must include your address and days of sale, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever that day is. The signs must be promptly removed by sunup following your sales end date. Code enforcement would then collect your signs. The penalty for noncompliance may be a set dollar amount for each sign not collected or even perhaps a littering citation. Thank you for your time and consideration on this proposal that I presented to you today. I have one other item, but. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Did, did you. She said she had one more item. Did you, you still have time left, I think. Did you want to speak I do, up? I still have time. Yeah, you have a, a minute. I have like a half a minute, okay. Sure. <clears throat> what in the heck is going on with that white bus over there? That white bus looks like a prison bus in the middle of the historic downtown district. I received back, I arrived back in town last month only to be welcomed by a big white, what looks like to me, a Pinellas County Correctional Institute work bus. I thought, what are prisoners doing here? Collecting trash, working on roads, why? Then I read the newspaper, guess it used to be blue. I don't care about who's right, who's wrong legally. It's an eyesore. I don't think it makes our town look very welcoming and it's large and in charge presence is tacky. Maybe, just maybe, it would be better if it had some artwork done to it. A sponge diver, maybe a sunset or a water scene. Not a co prison correctional bus. Please address this eyesore, get that blemish off our streets. Thank you. Yeah. Next speaker, please. I'm Anita Frozen, I'm on Bayshore Drive. I'm also addressing the bus at Johnny's uh, uh, establishment there. From what I understand from the owner, it is the uh, man who bought the property is trying to get at him for his business and wants a piece of the action of his business and doesn't uh, and wants to push his way around. Uh, that's between the owner and the man who bought the property. But it is an eyesore. I think it's wrong what he's doing to the businessman. Uh, we don't work with uh, uh, gangsters in Tarpon. And that's exactly how this owner is, is acting with him with this bus. It is obnoxious looking. It ruins the downtown, it hurts the business, and it's not nice. And uh, I went to call the police, they said there was nothing they can do. I talked to authorities on it and they said he has the right, he owns the property. But we need to do something. This is wrong, trying to push a businessman around, trying to push a community around and snubbing his nose at us. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what we can do, I don't know legally what can be done, but uh, I'd like to meet the man on the street and let them know how we feel about them. Okay. It's wrong, it's ugly, and we don't like business people like that in Tarpon. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? Evening, Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. Tonight's reading, 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 11. Love of money. If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instructions of our Lord Jesus Christ and godly teaching, he is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and arguments that result in envy, quarreling, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a mean to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires 
that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And why do I bring this passage out tonight? Because I believe it was all for the love of money that we're dealing with this Anclote Harbors project. The city wants what they consider economic development, tax money, impact fees, money, money, money. Developer wants rents, revenue stream, money, 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 money. It's sad we're getting to this point that, as it said, there was conflict. And uh, just for the record, uh, earlier this evening, uh, we served the mayor through a process of Pinella subpoena services with our writ of appeal and petition to stay any permits that we have asked the city to follow with us. So now, the city has two suits and a petition. The original suit on 2020-34, the new one on the conditional use. And come Friday, you'll have another one on the zoning and the final development plans. And the petition we filed with you as the tribunal board to stay any issuance of permits. Look what you've gotten yourselves into for the love of money. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Chris Robosky, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. Uh, Peter Delacos is absolutely right. And so multiple lawsuits have been filed and without getting into any legal strategy, it's a multifaceted thing that you're going to be witnessing. For those of you who weren't around during the Walmart fight, you'll get to see it firsthand. This is just stage one, it's, we're only getting started. Next, we replace the board, which we did in the past. And you get to watch the city and the developer run around in circles, trying to fit square pegs in the round holes. And then they finally give up and they go back to the state that they came from. Just like Walmart went crying back to Arkansas, Morgan Group will go crying back to Texas. They're not gonna get to build this project and you'll get to see that. You'll get to see how it works, how this process, the democratic process works. if they wake up sooner than later. And then we can start the process of creating a park. But if they don't, it may be 15 years from now. Me standing here talking to another board about that vacant land. It's unbuildable. They're never going to get to build anything on it. All of their attempts will fail. And they'll try to come back here with different projects over and over and over if they, in fact, purchase the property. If not, it'll be up to Walmart to either sell or donate that land to us so that we can make it a park. The only thing that would be safe to put on that property. A preserve, even better. Then you won't have to have cars going in or out at all. But I know that people want a park that they can enjoy on the banks of the river. This is something we can do. It's not too late. You can talk to the developer and say, hey, guys, you can, we, we can already see which way this is going. Why would you put our city through that? And all you got to do is back out. And that's all they got to do. It's the right thing. So much easier to do the right thing to continue to do the wrong thing for the greed of money, for the love of money. 
that's going to cost them a lot of that stuff they love. And they're going to finally figure it out, just like Walmart did. The one thing they know how to do is count money. And when it started going backwards and they realized that it's going to cost them more money than they're ever going to make on that property, they finally realized, you know what, guys, pull the plug. And that's what's going to happen here. It's only a matter of time. And we have the, uh, you know, the good favor of living here. So we have all the time in the world because we live here. They don't. So they will eventually quit. This isn't their home. They'll find somebody else to descend upon, some other city. Flim flam them. Just like they try to do here. But we're going to let those other cities know that there is a way to defend yourself. So they might not get to do this in any other city again unless they walk away and do process real quick. They better get uh, their ducks in a row. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? Do we have any other public comments? I hear none. We are now going to the uh, consent agenda. Number one is special event, light of the bayou. Item number two is to authorize execution of contract for <coughs> conducting municipal election with Pinellas County Supervisor of Elections. Number three is to authorize execution of agreement for maintenance, public bathrooms at the Sponge Docks with uh, NU uh, properties. Number four is to ratify the increase and renew file number 170137CRS maintenance, repair, and operating supplies through uh, Omnia Partners RFP number 16154. And number five is the award bid, number 220006, BAM Temporary Personnel Service. And number six is the award file, number 220057N, JL Stormwater Revenue Sufficiency Study. I would like to pull item number six. Any other items that you'd like to pull? Page number one. Number five. Thank you. We go into the uh, public comments on the items two, three, four. Are there any public comments on these three items? Here none. Uh, the chair will detain a motion on those three items. So moved. Motion approved. Second. Or second. Roll call. Commissioner Vaticotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes, thank you. We started off one of the uh, special event light up the bayou. Commissioner Donovan, I think you pulled it. That was me on that one. Was it you? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. A uh, quick question from Mark. Uh, there's one at the end, they say that they need city staff to help clean up. Um, is that something that city's aware of or is going to be in agreement to? Yes. Okay. Um, and then secondly, I brought this up in years past, and especially with COVID still going on, um, although it's outside, we've, we've, they've really, have, and I'm, I'm happy to volunteer as well to help with this, but um, has the city talked to the, the volunteer group that's organizing this um, with Sunset Hills PTA about widening the spaces between the bags at all um, so it's not as close together with as many people tight together? Yes, and I think maybe we're throughout Craig Park. Yes, uh, we did that last year, and uh, okay. you know, I assume it's going to continue this year. Try to spread them out a little bit more, um, depending on the number, which should be large as it usually is. So, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure that communication was there. Yes. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Donovan. You pulled number six. I'm um, excuse me, number five. Yeah, I just wanted some additional explanation from staff as far as when this is going to be used and how this is going to work uh, for the positions for temporary personnel services. Tom or Paul, either one of you? Good evening, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. The uh, reason Tom and I are both getting up, we both share this um, services when needed. I can speak to uh, my department. Uh, we have some use in the cemetery when we have vacancies. They take some time to fill, and um, the temporary services are useful to keep the grass mowed and everything looking good while um, we fill a position. Okay. 
who uses it more. Yes, good evening, Tom Funch, Public Works Director. Yeah, uh, we use it pretty much the same way Paul does to fill some spaces. Uh, we've actually had one gentleman work for us almost three years uh, uh, through a service, so it actually worked out fairly well to bring somebody else on board. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need the service, if they can get people right now, but yes, we definitely need it. You want to go ahead and explain why we're asking for three of them, that same reason you said it? Um, well, so the same reason like everyone else has, it's hard to get personnel, so we got to give as much, uh, uh, three of them actually bid on the project, on, on, the, uh, on the contract, so we need as much access to personnel as we possibly can, so we might as well use all three of them, so. Okay, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. hey, I've got a quick question for you guys too. Am I understanding this correctly, like it's, they're gonna bill the city 67 to $80 an hour for the temporary service? No, I had that same back. question too when I read the form. That's just a way to compare apples and apples. What they did is they totaled up the price of all of those positions in the table. Okay. So the actual cost is somewhere around $15 an hour. Got it. Okay. Great. Thanks. First mission leader. That's all that's it. Yeah. Any other comments? No. Uh, now we go to uh, item number six. Uh, Mr. Harewood. <clears throat> I appreciate the discussion we had regarding this item the other day. If you please take a few minutes and explain to the audience and to the people at home the importance of the study uh, for the upcoming budget 2023 using the data that we have now for 2021. Okay. Well, good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Ron Herring, Finance Director. Uh, Section 20-74 of the Code of Ordinances requires that the stormwater rates be reviewed every three years. The last study was completed in fiscal year 2017. Uh, the study determines what rates are necessary to cover the costs of operations, maintenance, and the funding for capital projects within the Stormwater Enterprise Fund, while ensuring the minimum fund balance is maintained at the minimum crop requirements. And if you have any questions, I'm available to try to answer them. Thank you. This is also required by ordinance that we have to do this every three years, correct? Yes, it's, yes. I don't have any questions. Anybody does? No. Thank you. We're going to go to public. Uh, we're going to go to comments. Any public comments on these items? One, five, and six. Paniotis Kuyas, 595 Peninsula Avenue. I just want to speak on item five of uh, being in the temp staffing industry. The markup at 32% for. Uh, some of these bids are coming in between 32, 37 percent. That's actually a really good rate. Uh, that company's not making that much money. Uh, I know that some of my my cost margins are anywhere between 15 to 25 percent. So you can apply that to these companies that are bidding, and so they're really only making about a dollar, dollar fifty an hour, depending on the skilled laborers for these uh, contracts. So I just want to say congrats to. Um, the board and every and department heads that they got this temp uh, service contract in place. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, public comments on these three items? Here none. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any commission comments? No. For the three items, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. For uh, one, five, and six. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapenny? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes, thank you. We're now going to the uh, special consent agenda item number seven, which is the award file number 220040CAM, utilizing source well contract number 2021 2716 NAF vehicles, car, vans, SUVs, and light trucks with related equipment, accessories, and services for the purchase of vehicles. Staff report, Mr. LeCourse. Yes, uh, this is the item we bring forward. These are the items that you approved in your budget. So it's come time for the bids to come out and we've chosen these vehicles. So because of the price, price on it, that's why it's special consent as opposed to consent. Um, our procurement director and I think most of the people who have these vehicles are in the audience if you have any further questions, but they are all budgeted vehicles and uh, we're going out for them and hopefully there won't be chips or other problems where we're sitting. I think we still have a vehicle or so from last year's that we still haven't gotten because of chips that are missing from. So we wanna get the order in as soon as possible and hope we don't have to wait a year 
um, to get these vehicles. But they're in the audience if you have any question about any individual ones or the procurement process. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Do we have any comments on this item? Here or not? The chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any commission comments? Uh, yes, I, I do have one. I, I want to ask the city manager uh, whether this is uh, tracking fairly well. I know they're budgeted, but our costs are tracking fairly well with what w this actual cost is tracking with what we've actually budgeted. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I guess. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, Mark, can you have someone just highlight the the hybrid portion of it um, sure. that were being purchased? And I've got another comment after that as well, too. Okay. Thanks. Um, do you want to start, uh, Jeff, or who would the hybrid vehicles want to start? Total number. I mean, that's sure, no problem. Uh, you know, we were taking a look at uh, hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles for patrol use at this time. We don't. We wanted to see how the, they're going to work and function on a daily basis. So we were looking at purchasing two of the Ford hybrid interceptors. Uh, they're SUVs. Uh, one of those will be going to our <coughs> administrative major, Major uh, Ruggiero, who also oversees our traffic homicide investigated unit and uh, also does a lot of stuff with the firing arm range and stuff, so he'll have a large capacity in the vehicle to transport the things that are needed. And the other vehicle is going to be assigned to one of our detectives. Uh, both of the, their vehicles will be going uh, back to fleet to be reassigned throughout the city. But, you know, we're excited to see what the uh, hybrid has to offer in, in law enforcement and whether or not it'll be practical for us to, you know, expand out on the next year uh, with patrol vehicles. A quick question, Chief. Do you have uh, charging stations at the, at the station, or is it, does it need to be added? So? Uh, we do not have any charging stations. Now, these hybrids are not electric vehicles. Okay. They, they, you know, they're battery operated. They're, they run on fuel and stuff, but they'll shut down when the vehicle's sitting stationary. Uh, and then when the officer presses the gas pedal, the gas will turn on and go, kind of like the old Prius-type style vehicles and okay. stuff. Okay, thanks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Paul, would you like to get up and while he gave you the opening about charging about your staff and what we've done about since we're going to increase the buying these cars, obviously we need charging and please tell them what you've developed in-house, um, which is very innovative from the other cities I've talked to. Thank you, um, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. I first want to say I, I really uh, want to acknowledge uh, Police Chief Young for taking a bold step <coughs> with um, working on this hybrid and getting this going. I think his background with um, helping our city become a green certified city, he gets it. And um, I really appreciate him stepping out there and doing that. It's going to help us as a city moving forward. Um, as far as uh, we're increasing our in-house capability for building chargers and installing them, and um, our utilities maintenance department division, rather, the one that works on our lift stations and our SCADA, have some really talented electricians and controls people, so I've got them installing our own, a couple of them already, so when we get our LEAF, which are pure electric vehicles, we'll have chargers ready to go. Uh, we've had a little trouble with that Duke installation out here by the clerk's office with um, half of it hasn't been working for a long time, multiple emails to Duke, you know, it was free, so I guess when you get something for free, you have limited control over it, but it really prompted us to say, hey, we gotta take control of our own stuff, and get uh, some skills. So we're developing those and very proud of what staff's able to do. I also wanted to highlight the last vehicle on your list is an electric van. And that's something at the wastewater treatment plant that where staff analyzed what would be a really good impact um, for the city for a green fleet. And this van is for the uh, fats, oils, and grease program called FOG. It goes around to the various restaurants, does inspections, et cetera. It's a high uh, fuel usage vehicle, so uh, Ford has an electric van. So um, that's what this request is there. Okay. So we're moving ahead with sustainability. Yeah. Mr. Smith, we have uh, quite a few uh, charges throughout the city. Do you, have, do you keep track and see how many people that are actually using the service? Yes, we do, and we're able to get reports. And I don't have current numbers, but um, just my... Uh, Observations of this one over here, I, I know we're getting good use of this charger, right. and uh, I think it's going to continue to increase as electric vehicle offerings increase. Okay. I know they're getting popular. Any other comments? Yeah, I, just want, hey, I want to say thank you for your work on this. I know it's a 
above and beyond kind of your scope and uh, appreciate your, your passion on this, uh, figuring these ones out. So I do want to uh, say thanks to the city and making the effort with moving towards hybrid and electric cars um, to reduce the maintenance, obviously, and the, the pollution and, um, and gas overall um, in our city footprint. So thank you. Thank you. Any comments? I do have another comment just overall um, about this item. Go ahead. Um, so, Mark, I, I, I did see, um, I know there's some type of equation. I know we've talked about it in years past. I do want to see more um, back up in the break-even standpoint. Um, I understand that vehicles, when they get to a certain mileage, there's more maintenance. But uh, with newer vehicles, I think a lot of those are actually lasting longer as well, too. And maybe they're not lasting as long. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But I would like to see some breakout um, before next year's purchases um, on how we calculate the repair cost when the break-even point is where we need to stop repairing and go out and buy a new car or a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something I think it's important. I, I didn't necessarily see as much details as I wanted to. Uh, before tonight, but it's something if we could make a note, maybe at the first half of next year, we could go and dig into a little bit deeper um, so we're prepared and we could educate everybody about it. This is exactly why we're buying this. Um, I do get comments every once in a while about the amount of new vehicles, but I'm, I'm proud that we have vehicles that work because if we don't have vehicles that work, we're not servicing the residents. Um, we got safety issues. There's other things that could be in place if we don't have operating vehicles, but at the end of the day, I, I do want to see some more details behind it. Well, we certainly can, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Batikiotis? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes. We now go into the item number eight, which is the approval for initial projects to be funded by American Rescue Plan Act. Staff report. Yes. Uh, as you know, we've begun the process of evaluation of, for projects for the American Rescue Plan. Um, we started out by, I asked staff to provide a list of, of items that could possibly be looked at and uh, possibly used for this. I think everybody needs to remember on this, these are not items we're bringing forward to you yet, but there are ideas from the department. We're still evaluating all of them and uh, we'll bring them forward um, a little further when we get the other input because the other important part of this process is the citizen input. Um, we've already begun that, our Connect Tarpon engagement as, and we have promoted very heavily, although I'm, you know, hopefully we can do some things to get some results better. I have on the dais the up to date to the day um, results so far from Connect Tarpon. We've not had the participation we wanted to on it, although we've advertised, so we'll work on that. Um, when we started this, this, uh, this process from Connect Tarpon, we also provided paper forms at the library for people who are not, you know, didn't feel comfortable using computer. We also handed out the paper ones um, at the sponge docks and have them at the marina. Um, although those documents do encourage people to go on the website and fill it out on the website, but if they didn't want to, they can, they can turn those in. So the citizen process is going to go on for a long time for months um, as we compile, go to groups. There, there has been a lot of citizens talking to us about it and we encourage them after they talk with us about what they want to say to go to this survey. So the citizens going on, obviously we've got ideas from the commission we need to look at um, that we'll look at to add as we evaluate, but this is, this is a, a long process as we look and get the feedback and decide which is best for the money. Um, what I'm bringing forward to you tonight is, is a request for the expenditure on some projects that I would like to get started on now, um, five projects. Um, what I've talked to you about, our process so far with the American Rescue Plan and these projects were, was brought to the last Budget Advisory Committee and presented to them. Um, we are going back to the Budget Advisory in January to talk a little more about the results we've had from the citizens, um, the citizens' result, but at this time, um, they unanimously supported these five projects. 
Um, two of the projects we talked to you about during the budget time, Ron had said there's there's at least a million dollars in um, that was going to be for a revenue loss that we could use for a, a bigger variety of things than than some of the criteria, and we identified during the budget time um, number two, the new roof and chiller system for the public safety building. Obviously, it's about a $900,000 item. It's something we have to do and are going to do. Um, projects would have to be bumped or we'd have to find that money or go into reserve to do them. So that was one of the things we told you in budget time that um, we're going to ask for. The other one is a smaller 60000 resurfacing of the Court Street Library and Cultural Center parking lot. So those two we had already talked about in the budget time is bringing forward. Number one is, is probably our number one project for um, septic to sewer, which is finishing Bayshore. I know many of you on the board a long time has been watching our progress of moving up Bayshore, um, um, which is one of the areas identified long ago in our study near the water and needing to update for the environment. Um, so to us, that project is a no brain. It's number one on the list, ready to go. So um, it is obvious that that's a good project to use. Um, for that, um, number three is a $48,000 item, but it talks about mental health treatment, crisis intervention, um, counseling and training for public safety, which is an element of the American Rescue Plan of, of doing things like that for our public safety staff. And the final one, which covers the category and we know we need to do something with of helping for business recovery, is citywide advertising, marketing um, procedure for what we were asking for $100,000 to really promote the businesses and the city. Um, things are going well now, but what the businesses will tell you once Easter leaves and we run into that area between May and September, um, that is going to be a real focus of whatever we can do to bring people, not only people from far away, but people in the Tri-County area, from the Trinity area, from Wesley Chapel, um, increased advertising, um, and, and, and really worked out. And under this plan, we, we plan to sit down with the Merchants Association, with the Chamber of Commerce, and see and, and begin a plan of, of using the money to advertise and promote our business and coming to Tarpon. I think this is probably the, one of the most important things um, for us to do, especially as we try to recover, and especially um, starting now so we can get ready for when that after Easter time um, drop off comes that we can have some innovative advertising. There's a lot of things we haven't been able to do because the costs are too much. So. We want to sit with those groups, evaluate, brainstorm, and find what we think is the best bang of the buck for uh, bringing people to our town. And, uh, and uh, that's mainly that item. So it's five items, $2,108. Um, and I'd like to request for us to be able to move forward to, to work on those items while we continue with citizen engagement. Um, BOC engagement and everything else to prioritize and look at the other projects of what we're going to do with the American Rescue Plan. Finished? Yeah. Thank you. We go to the public comments on this item. Do we have any public comments? Frank Lund, 743 Chesapeake Drive, Tarpon Springs. Hi. Good evening. Um, I understand this is a work in progress. Um, there's several projects tonight that are proposed on funding under the uh, ARPA Act. Uh, I just wanted to remind the mayor and the commissioners and the staff, uh, the overall intent of this act was to provide substantial flexibility uh, for the local government to meet local needs, including support for households, for small businesses, impacted industries, essential work, essential workers and the communities hardest hit by the crisis. Uh, this was a notable phrase within the, within the act itself. Um, my overall observation, and, and Mark brought this up, is that we need to do a better job of reaching out to our communities uh, to determine a little bit more pragmatically how they were affected by COVID, what we can do, and the best approach to using the ARPA funds to mitigate this effect. Uh, rather than just treat this as a windfall for the city coffers and, and do whatever the city wants. Um, 
There was a section in the backup material tonight uh, that was listed as tentatively designated projects from the departments. Um, several of them, again, are up for approval tonight. I specifically wanted to address the ones that were listed under cybersecurity. Um, on the surface, I'm a cybersecurity person. I cannot realistically determine how any of them on that list fall under cybersecurity. It's just impossible for me to look at that list and say how it protects the, the sensitive information of the city. Um, there's not enough time to go through the list. Uh, you have the list. Um, but I'm going to urge you all not to just simply designate items that don't neatly fit in other categories and sound like they might fit under cybersecurity simply because they're just not generally understood or scrutinized. Um, an easy sell in that category because nobody really knows what's going on in that category. But cybersecurity as a whole is an important function of IT that is intended to keep the city's sensitive data secure, period. Fiber to lift stations and fiber to, to other things doesn't keep anything secure. It just provides another transport mechanism. Um, anyway, so. I, I just wanted to remind you that cybersecurity is an important function of IT. Um, it, it should be intended to keep the city's sensitive data safe, um, period. It should be treated as such. So thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, Jackie Turner, 792 Chesapeake Drive. Um, in looking at this list, um, again, like what Mr. Lent said, is making sure, number one, that we do have that community engagement. I understand that we are using the Connect Tarpon platform. Um, went on there today, there's been 13 people who's responded. So I feel, and I know there's more effort trying to go out there with it, but I, I feel like we need to have um, some greater <coughs> feedback on that because that is one of the top three things, city staff, board of commissioners, and the public. So I think there's more than the 13 that we could be looking at. Um, and looking, you know, the summary sheet from the Treasury Department about what these areas are. So you have the main funding objectives and then looking at what I did because I've done these grant projects before, looking at these five initial projects, you know, they are quite critical, very necessary, but in pinning them with what project priority is there. So supporting public health response, project number three, you know, the mental health treatment for our first responders, that's a fit. Maybe you could put project two in there. The idea being that where do these projects fit in with the funding objectives? And in doing so, having the city staff have some clear narrative that is written out that explains how the project does align with the funding objectives instead of just saying it kind of sort of fits, so let's put it in there. You know, we're looking also at 16.5% of the potential available funds of the 12.8 million that we're looking to go ahead and use before we have a clear understanding of what we're going to use it for. So just a bit concerning that we're looking to use 16.5% of our funding before we determine what we want to use our funding for, if, if that makes sense. We don't have a big plan, but we're already spending money before we come up with what that budget is. So just wanted to bring those points up. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? Bunny off these chaos, 595 Peninsula Avenue. Um, I just wanted to bring up that I'm looking at the roof of the public safety building. It looks bad. It's got to be replaced right away. Uh, looking at Bayshore Septic, those res residents have been waiting for a long time to get um, their sewer extended. They're a big tax base. It's important that we take care of them as well as all that uh, stuff that they have that runs into the water. Now, regarding citizen engagement posts, and we just heard from the prior two speakers, there's a really simple way to fix all that. If the city of Tarpon Springs can create a page or a Facebook page that's called Tarpon Springs Citizen Engagement Posts, you have simple, simple questions, three, four sentence topics, you have your items listed, you get the residents to respond back right away, and then they're going back to hanging out, chatting with their friends on Facebook. You gotta attach them to all these social media stuff. We've been trying 
for many months now with the Connect website. I understand we're trying. It's a good platform for our departments to be able to gather information, but I don't think they're able to gather a lot of information. So we need to reach out to the citizens by creating a Facebook page that says citizen engagement posts, reaching out to all these social uh, websites, and that way you will get the most interaction you need. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Hear none? Okay, uh, the chair will entertain a motion on item number eight. On, on all of the, uh, in, in one shot. <coughs> I would uh, move to uh, I'd make a motion to uh, approve item number three and defer the rest for further comments to, until we figure out what we want to use the rest of the funds for in all one conversation and one funding aspect. Okay. So you are making a motion to approve number three only? Correct. Do we have a second on that? Do we have a second? Motion dies. Motion to approve items. Um, motion to approve the whole thing. One through five. One through five. What numbers? All of it. All of them. All of it. Do we have a second? I mean, the if I can build on that for a second, Mayor. Of course, go ahead. I mean, the the sewer hookup is a no-brainer. As is the new roof and chiller. Those are both items that are already budget and I understand you know the concern about taking up a percentage of the total funds um, but I think that those are you know items that need to happen regardless um, and I don't have any issue with the allotments for the balance so that's why I made the motion to approve all of it do we have a second I'll second it at least for discussion so we can all clarify what we want to see thank you all right I will have a discussion Well, Mr. Lecouris, these projects are, you propose, are very important, and they should be done. The cost of these projects, is, as you stated, is $2.1 million, and that would be out of the uh, $12 million that we'll be receiving from the uh, American Rescue Funds over two years. But I do have some questions. Why not addressing the whole list of the projects and programs that, that you prepared and why are we not prioritizing all those uh, projects that we have to do to make sure that we have the input of the Budget Advisory Committee and also we have a community engagement on all those. I understand that all, those, all, the, all these projects are very, very important. <coughs> From the base short that it has to be done, that we left it a long time ago, it has to be done, but uh, uh, I still think it's appropriate for the people of Tarpa Springs to tell us which projects they want to have first, we want to do first. Um, if we, uh, the public safety building, it's a 20 years old and it needs to be, the, the roof is leaking, uh, the roof needs to be repaired, the uh, metal supports are rusted and uh, they probably need to be uh, sandblasted and repaired or replaced. The last thing we want is for the electronics and the uh, telecommunications to give with. But again, the, uh, the question is going to be, do we have a routine maintenance schedule for this building? Look at those pictures. It's kind of scary. Uh, it looks very unsafe the way it is. Um, I don't know when's the last time we looked at it when we painted, but looks, with all this rust, it looks like it's been ignored for many years. Uh, number three, the mental health treatment. This is very, very important. The uh, $40,000 you propose, and I think is money that we, we all spend, and that should not be just an only one time. That should be a continued education because our first con uh, respondents, the, uh, the police and the fire, they're constantly under a lot of pressure, and we must provide the service to them. Uh, this is something that we should do every year, not just a one-time deal. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about, advertising and marketing, I think is a very good idea to do uh, marketing. I, I will suggest that uh, to see if we can actually do any uh, advertising, some kind of uh, marketing <coughs> inside the uh, uh, Tampa International Airport. There's a lot of traffic, 
even a small uh, item there to show the Tarpa Springs. And it's only 30 minutes to, or 40 minutes away from the airport. I think we're going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of visitors from there. It's going to be well spent. Again, I think most people, uh, I think it's very, very important to have a community engagement. And by just putting it on the uh, tarpon engagement, connect tarpon engagement, I don't think that's good enough because many people don't like to use the other uh, website, don't like to use Facebook. A lot of people like to use face-to-face -face meetings where you can actually ask questions and get answers. So with that, I will support only the number three for right now till we actually get the input from the people and the Budget Advisory Committee. Mayor, as I told you, I brought this to the Budget Advisory Committee. They have already looked and approved these five. These five, five are the priority. We brought the priority of two of them to the budget process and talked about them during the budget process. They were identified in the budget process as a priority. Your septic to sewer and everything we're doing for sustainability, that is the number one project that is on there. As I told you about the marketing, we, need, we want to gear up for the time of the businesses before, so these are all priorities. These all were brought to the Budget Advisory Committee, who approved them unanimously. Um, they've looked at it. They looked at all the projects. They looked at why we were bringing these forward now and supported it unanimously, because I want to think of bringing it to you, because I know someone would bring up that point. So that was all done in advance. You know, we need to do something, whether you tell me to go to reserve or something to do the roof, we need to do something now. All these are priorities that need to be done now, um, and that's the only reason why I brought these forward to you. Uh, I hear what you're saying, Mr. LaCourris, but it uh, seems like uh, we're not having the whole picture the way we're doing it. I think we're doing a piecemeal job, and um, I'm not in favor of doing that. Uh, any other comments, Vice Mayor? I've got a couple of them. Um, the one thing I want to make sure is that the, the city manager remembers if there's a priority of the boards and kind of what the board wants to see is, is directing you, right? And so if there's not a priority structure and the board prefers to see a big picture of how we're going to spend the whole $12 million before we dedicate a large amount of money, I think that's the, the route we should be taking. Um, can someone answer, I know we've got a, a significant amount of staff here, what, when is the Bayshore septic to sewer plan currently with the infrastructure plan and the current water rates? Is there a date at all anywhere? That's, is it 2024, is it 25, is it not on a schedule at all? Because I know we did the water efficiency and sewer rate study. I'm sure that was equated in there because it was a capital improvement. Does anyone have a number on that? Coming up here to tell you that I don't have that in front of me. Um, I do know it's in the 10 year plan, and I do believe it is within a couple of years. Okay, so the 10 year plan, when did that 10 year plan start, Paul? Do you remember that? Well, it's a rolling 10 years part of our rate study, so okay. we look 10 years out. And um, we c included the Bayshore project and also the Florida Avenue area a few years later. I think that's around 2025. Okay. So uh, this would allow us to move faster on both this project and um, the Florida Avenue project as well, which are the high priority projects on our master plan. Okay. So it, it is part of the, the rate study though. Our current rates that are paying today for sewer is, has the Bayshore project built into it. This would just bring it up faster. Correct. Okay. Can I ask you a question while you're up? Um, I know you're an expert of multiple things. Um, so the cast iron pipes, we talked about those in the past. Do you remember how many miles we have of those in the city off the top of your head? I, I don't have that number. I know we got 140 miles of water pipes. What percentage of those are cast iron? I don't have that, that one. That would be sort of a rain man okay. capability. I don't well, I know. Ron's <laughs> over there, and we've got some rain man uh, talent over there. So, um, it, Correct me if I'm wrong, it, the inside of the cast iron pipes rust, am I correct in that, saying that? That's correct, um, but with the regular flow of water, we do add a corrosion inhibitor. It's a phosphate-based coating, so that serves to protect that from happening. So if they're rusted already, does it have an impact on the water, though, quality? 
It will if the water does not circulate enough, and that does happen in certain configurations, dead end lines, long ones. Um, when the use goes down, the water tends to sit in the pipe and it can cause a color thing. It's, it's remedied easily by flushing, um, but that I don't think is a majority of our situation in the city. But there's not a safety issue with having rusty cast iron pipes no, and having is, water run through them? There is not. Okay. It's certainly aesthetics, but not safety. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, Mark, I know we talked about the, the new chillers and uh, the roof. We've been talking about the chiller system for a few years um, overall in the, the public safety building. Uh, if, when do you, you want that done like yesterday, right? I mean, there's current leaks in that building? Yes. Okay. Um, I know the chillers are kind of on their last legs as well too. Um, and then what do we spend on advertising currently today in the budget? I know it's a, a decent amount of money that we put in there currently. I Is think it, Karen's here. She can give the okay. So it's pretty a, close to exact. And Karen, if you could include the printed material and all the different things that we set aside. If you yeah, we're spending about seventy-five thousand a year in currently. advertising. Okay. That includes um, every other year we print uh, one hundred thousand brochures, place them in all the AAA centers and all the recreation centers. Um, it includes the TV that we did last year. Um, our digital ads, the billboards that we have at Pi, um, distribution of our of our our city brochure. Um, we do online digital ads, uh, a lot of newspaper advertising, social media ads. Okay, how do we come up with the hundred thousand dollars? Is it just kind of like it sounds good to use, or what are your thoughts on that one? Well, again, that's th again. This is this is not sound like the budget. You have to use it within a year. Um, after we plan to get together with the merchants and stuff, there's a lot of things we've turned. For instance, Tampa Airport, they've wanted to do. It's too costly within a 70000 budget, so I'm sure when we go to the meeting, they're going to talk about maybe that Tampa Airport advertising again. You want to reiterate some of the other ones that we haven't done? And again, reiterate, it's the blitz for the time in May when, when the people start going away and we want to get a little head start to begin this. But this is not necessarily something that's all going to be spent right away. It's just dedication of that money um, to work on um, different procedures and, and advertising. Before we enter, can I ask just a, another clarifying question? Is this money going to help offset the general funds that are used today in the budget that, for that 75000 or this is on top of the general funds? On top of that. Okay, yeah, we, we pretty much got that, I think, money for this year. I think we've got that pretty much spaced out of, of, of used. Um, and this would add on to what we've got used, because I think you've got most of that used, the 70000 budgeted. Can yeah, I? that's that's all what we do each year. It includes the, um, we've got the billboards on I-4 and I-75. Right. We just extended those. Um, and then if you remember, some of these funds are, are um, shared with the merchants and the chamber, so we stretch our dollars that way. But um, going back to that, the Tampa Airport is one that we've talked about for years doing. They have digital ads there right when people are coming down, um, and we'd like to do something there. There are a couple of billboards um, at, near the Pi Airport on, um, on US-19 that we would like to target as well. We'd like to do a little bit more um, coming in from the Orlando area and then a lot more on the beaches. Um, St. Pete Clearwater does an, an amazing job getting people in to Clearwater Beach and the area. We've been having some discussions with St. Pete CVB on um, what they can do to help us here. We're trying to get the people up, you know, up to Tarpon Springs. So advertising down there, getting with their concierges so all of our information is in all the hotels, the Jolly Trolleys, um, all the, the magazines that they have there, that they have in the hotel rooms. There's a lot of things that we've talked about but we haven't been able to do. Okay. Um, so from this standpoint though, and what I feel comfortable with tonight is number two and number three. Um, number one, I don't feel comfortable with doing because I believe we have it in our current rate study with, uh, I support doing base or septic to sewer, but I believe we, we could do that with our current rates from sewer um, funding that, on our monthly bills. But I think if we're, if we're trying to get something for the chillers and it's an issue today that we don't have to tap into emergency funds, I mean, that would be my suggestion is two and three, but the other three, I don't feel comfortable approving tonight. Um, as of right now. I would like to see uh, the, all of them together as a whole. 
Um, two other things, uh, I do like the idea for the Cops and Kids uh, Youth Center. I think that's a great avenue to utilize that, uh, the money. And also I think it's a good idea to um, help the hospital. Um, the CEO, Jason Dunkel from Advent Health, North Pinellas, sent us an email um, detailing the, the amount of investments of $50 million that they have invested over the past couple of years in the hospital. Um, and if the city could help with anything, I think this is an opportunity now to help uh, put a little bit of money into the hospital, either if it's for the emergency um, generation uh, project or the solidification of the outside of the building to prevent it from uh, having to be evacuated from hurricanes. Uh, and then also that shows the parent company or the, the headquarters of this um, the organization that the city of Tarpon Springs is also willing to invest a little bit into the building that's owned by the city of Tarpon Springs, and hopefully they could um, spend some of their capital dollars in this coming budget year, following budget year as well too. Um, so I think those are two things that are important to look at with this money. But uh, just to reiterate, um, for tonight, just two and three would be the only thing I would feel comfortable voting on tonight, supporting. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I had some additional questions as well. Uh, for, for number two, for the public safety building roof, and I imagine either of our public safety officials can kind of clue us in on this. Can you kind of give us what the current state is? I know I've, I've taken a tour uh, inside the building. I know there's a lot of sensitive IT infrastructure there that I imagine can't get rained on. Um, can you kind of paint us a picture of what it's like when it rains there and how the roof is kind of giving you guys trouble day to day? Uh, Scott Young, fire chief. Oh, yes, the roof. As you can see from the pictures, it's uh, bubbling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's lifting. Sometimes when you walk on the roof, you can actually hear the water under the bubbles. So it is leaking. Uh, I think we just recently had a leak in the dispatch area, yes. uh, which holds the backup computer systems for the city, along with the dispatch center itself. So that's a major area of uh, worry. We do have some leaking inside uh, to the bay of the fire station along the walls occasionally they've come out and tried to fix it patch it up but it just doesn't hold so that's pretty much what we deal with uh, especially during the rainy season we you see more leaks than normal and then of course the rusting of the metal and stuff like that okay and then while you're up there can you detail a little bit more about what number three is going to be and what that's going to allow us to do because that, that's something i was curious about is just how that you know how they come up with that number is that a consultant that comes that in was and does a, it a week uh, thing or a consultant group that we uh talked to uh, uh professionals, which a lot of departments, uh, police and fire throughout the county have been uh, talking to. Uh, they specialize in uh, public safety, police and fire. Uh, I know they were just used um, for the firefighters at Palm Harbor when the uh, lieutenant down there was hit by the car. They called them out for their crews because the crews are pretty messed up. Uh, I believe uh, we We'd be using them for the police department for any instance they may have to help with their people but they do specialize in public safety uh, where a lot of times the EAP system doesn't have those specialized people that really concentrate on what we do uh, okay. they can help it help us initially get us to help but these people would be on uh, call to be able to help us when we needed them okay uh, commission one second first let me know about sure. you uh, city attorney our um, Public hearing is supposed to start at 7.30, but we're in the middle of this discussion. Should we continue to that or just stop it? It's at the board's discretion. Your rules of procedure say that you need to stop and have the public hearing. If this is not near a conclusion, I would suggest stopping and holding the public hearings. Um, if it is near a conclusion, um, then I would suggest moving forward and finishing this item before moving along. Um, but I defer to the chair on that. Okay. Well, it looks like it's going to be a little longer before we finish this one, so we're going to stop it and begin the, the public hearing, and we come back to that, which is um, the item number eight. Commissioner Donovan, uh, when we come back to the item number eight, we'll start with you, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Is it item number 10, Mary, we're going to be starting with, right? Yes, we're starting with uh, item number 10. The items number 10A and 10C are quasi-judicial. These items, uh, the item number uh, 10B is legislated. All these items are related. 
will be discussed together, but we're going to vote separately. So the item number 10A is the application 21-116-21-117. That's the uh, 369 and 379 Giroux Boulevard stamp. The ordinance 2021-21 <coughs> annexation. This is the second reading. It was deferred from November 16, 2021, regular session. And I will ask our city attorney to read the title and explain the quasi-judicial process. Yes, and Mr. Mayor, would you like me to read the title for all three ordinances now and then explain the quasi-judicial procedure and then move on from there? That would be good. Okay. Uh, ordinance 2021-21, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing 0.36 acres more or less of real property located at 369 and 379 J. Rue Boulevard, lots three and floor, block B, Highland Grove Manor subdivision, located on the south side of J. Rue Boulevard, approximately 140 feet east of Anclote Road, applications number 21-116 and 21-117, providing for findings and providing for an effective date, published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 29th and October 6th, 2021. Ordinance 2021-22, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use map for 0.36 acres more or less of real property, located at 369 and 379 J. Rue Boulevard, lots three and four, block B, Highland Grove Manor subdivision, located on the south side of J. Rue Boulevard, approximately 140 feet east of Anclote Road, from Pinellas County Land Use Designation RU, Residential Urban, to City of Tarpon Springs Land Use Designation RU, Residential Urban, applications number 21-116 and 21-117, providing for findings and providing for an effective date, published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 29th and October 6th, 2021. An ordinance 21, 20 excuse me, Ordinance 2021-23, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning atlas of the City of Tarpon Springs for 0.36 acres more or less of real property located at 369 and 379 J. Rue Boulevard, lots three and floor, Block B, Highland Grove Manor subdivision, located on the south side of J. Rue Boulevard, approximately 140 feet east of Anclote Road, from Pinellas County Zoning Designation R4, 1, 2, and 3 Family Residential to City of Tarpon Springs Zoning Designation R70, 1, and 2 Family Residential, applications number 21-116 and 21-117, providing for findings and providing for an effective date, published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 29th and October 6, 2021. Uh, a and B, items number A and B are in a part of a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest regarding these items this evening? Seeing none, um, anyone wishing to speak this evening on the, these items, if you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So sworn. Uh, staff, you may make your presentation. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. The first applications are 21-116 and 21-117. Um, the stamp applications for property at 369 and 379 Giroux Boulevard. Uh, these applications are, uh, this is second reading of the annexation land use and zoning. Uh, there's no new information to enter into the record. Staff recommendation is to approve ordinances 2021-21. Uh, annexing the property, 2021-22, amending the future land use map designation uh, to the city of Tarpon Springs, residential urban, and ordinance 2021-23, amending the zoning atlas 
to the city of Tarpon Springs zoning designation of R71 and two family. Um, I would enter in the, uh, into the record the previous um, staff reports and presentations um, from the previous public hearings. Uh, with that, I'll answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions? No. Right. Seeing none, is the applicant present? Would the applicant like to give a presentation or ask any questions of staff? No, does the board have any questions for the applicant? None. Are there any public comments on this issue? Anyone from the public wishing to speak on any of these items? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Well, thank you, the chair will detain a motion, motion on the 10A. Motion to approve 10A. Second. Any comments on this item? Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapini? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Luzes? Yes. We're now going to the item 10B, the ordinance 2021-22. Uh, future land uses a second reading. See the attorney. Motion. You're looking for a motion, Mayor? No. Yeah, motion to approve uh, ordinance 2021-22 future land use. Do I have a second? S second. Any commission comments? Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lujuzis? Yes. The item number 10 C is the ordinance 2021-23. Rezoning, this is a second reading. Need a motion for that as well. Motion to approve. Second. Any comments? None. Roll call. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Mr. Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lizes. Yes, thank you. We are now going to uh, item 11A and 11B. 11B is quasi-judicial. These items are related, will be discussed together, but we're going to vote separately. The item number 11A is the application 21-105 Northside Engineering, 1954 South Pinellas Avenue. This is the first reading. Um, this is the ordinance 2021-19 future land use. See the attorney, would you please read the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the ordinance? Ordinance 2021-19, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use map for 0.38 acres, more or less of real property located at 1954 South Pinellas Avenue, on the west side of South Pinellas Avenue, approximately 280 feet north of Klosterman Road, from Pinellas County Land Use Designation RL, Residential Low, and GC, Commercial General, to City of Tarpon Springs Land Use Designation CN, Commercial Neighborhood, Application 21-105, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. The second reading will be held after adoption of the countywide map and uh, countywide map amendment um, and was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 29th and October 27th, 2021. <coughs> ordinance 2021-20, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning atlas of the City of Tarpon Springs for 0.38 acres more or less of real property, located at 1954 South Pinellas Avenue on the west side of South Pinellas Avenue, approximately 280 feet north of Klosterman Road from Pinellas County Zoning Designation R4, one, two, and three family residential, and C2, <coughs> general commercial and services, to City of Tarpon Springs zoning designation NB, neighborhood business, application number 21-105, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. The second reading will be held after the adoption of the countywide map amendment and was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 29th and October 27th, 2021. As one of these items is quasi-judicial, this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it's not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. 
The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest on these items this evening? Seeing none. Anyone wishing to speak on these items, if you could please stand to raise your right hand to be sworn. Since you have already been sworn, no need to reiterate the oath. Uh, with that, staff may make the presentation. Thank you. Uh, this is application 21-105. Um, if you recall, the board did review, um, previously reviewed uh, annex the annexation of this property and did approve it. Uh, we did have to defer the land use and associated zoning and land use applications um, for some advertising issues. So uh, the rest of the application tonight then before you is to um, amend the land use uh, to the appropriate uh, City of Tarpon Springs designations. Uh, this is the property on South Pinellas Avenue, just north of uh, Klosterman Boulevard. Uh, those familiar with the site, this was the old, um, I believe, Garrigan Real Realty Building. Um, as we the annexation piece of this is grayed out, that's already been approved. The applications tonight are to amend the future land use map. Um, it is split designations in Pinellas County of residential low and commercial general. Uh, we are proposing to change that to uh, one uniform land use designation of commercial neighborhood. Um, and then the rezoning is from the Pinellas County designations of R4 and C2, commercial general, uh, to again, a na neighborhood business uh, zoning. And just to look at the, um, the parcel and the split on how the, the current split on the land use and zoning, uh, this is a residential, this is a commercial in the county, and again, it will be all become neighborhood business um, under the proposed uh, land use and zoning designations. And I'll go through these rather quickly since the board has seen this once before. Um, on the review criteria for the future land use amendment, we do find it's generally consistent with the comprehensive plan policies and, cons um, and uh, have reviewed for consistency with the countywide plan. Uh, this will require an amendment to the countywide plan um, on their map. Uh, so that will uh, take place. Um, and if approved, then we'll come back for a second reading with the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the rezoning, uh, we do find it's consistent um, with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan. It's appropriate to the question and compatible with uh, existing and planned uses in the area, uh, provides for efficient orderly development, and will not adversely affect the ability of the city to provide services to the property. Uh, staff recommendation is to approve Ordinance 2021-19, amending the future land use map uh, from the Pinellas County designations of residential low and commercial general to the city of Tarpon Springs commercial neighborhood designation and ordinance uh, approval of ordinance 2021-20, amending the zoning atlas from the Pinellas County designations of R4, 1, 2, and 3 family residential and C2 commercial general and services to the city of Tarpon Springs neighborhood business zoning. Planning and Zoning Board did review this on November 15th and recommended approval. Uh, we've had no, um, uh, no public correspondence on this as a result of uh, advertising. Uh, with that, I'll stop and answer any questions uh, that you might have. Thank you. I've just got a quick one. Any questions from the board? Uh, I've got a quick one, Renee. Um, so how come this didn't go for like highway business, which is next door to it already in the city? Um, within the annexed part of the city versus um, just what you, the neighborhood business or? Uh, we felt like the neighborhood business was more compatible by the fact that it's a two piece par property mm -hmm. and it encroaches into, you know, it, um, it, it's right next to the house. It, right? Yeah, it, it, it encroaches into, into a neighborhood. So we, on the one hand, you know, we you kind of down zoned one piece of it, we kind of up zoned the other piece and, and but, but the applicant did want a uniform land use and zoning on the property. Um, in the future, if the property is redeveloped or developed, um, it, it keeps the height down um, and it would require buffering of anything that would go on the back piece next to the, to the <coughs> residential. So we felt it was an, you know, a more appropriate okay. approach to take with the property. Okay, that seems consistent, so thank you. Mm -hmm. 
any other questions for staff? Seeing none, is the applicant here? I do not see who's here tonight. Um, is there any, are there any members of the public who would like to comment on this item? Any members of the public who would like to speak on this item? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. The chair will obtain a motion for the 11A. Motion to approve 11A, ordinance 2021-19, future land use. Second. Any uh, commission comments? Here none, roll call. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. We need a motion for the ordinance 2021-20 rezoning. Motion to approve ordinance 2021-20 rezoning. Second. Any commission comments? Here none. And roll call, please. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Next is item number 12, the ordinance 2021-24. This is the application 21-128, comprehensive plan amendment, property rights element. This is the first reading. It was deferred from November 2nd, 2021. City Attorney, if you please read the ordinance. Ordinance 2021-24, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the City of Tarpon Springs comprehensive plan to adopt a property rights element in accordance with Florida statute 163.3161 subsection 10, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. The second reading will be held after the expedited state review process and was published in the Tampa Bay Times by total only on September 29th and October 31st, 2021. Uh, good evening. Again, this is um, a comprehensive plan text amendment. Uh, this is required by the city uh, to be adopted in one form or another um, as a result of uh, new legislation that went into effect on July the 1st, uh, 2021. And essentially, uh, the legislature is requiring um, all municipalities and all local governments to adopt um, a property rights element into their comprehensive plan. And the, legislat the, the, uh, the statutes you know, indicate very clearly what elements must be included um, in order for this to be considered uh, compliant with state statute. Um, and those, I'll just read those into the record. Um, uh, the following rights shall be considered in local decision making. And these things, so these are things that must be included in the element as a, at a minimum. The right of a property owner to physically possess and control his or her interest in the property, including easements, leases, or mineral rights. The right of a property owner to use, maintain, develop, and improve his or her property for personal use or for the use of any other person subject to the state, state law and local ordinances. The right of the property owner to pr privacy and to exclude others from the property to protect the owner's possessions and property and the right of the property owner to dispose of his or her property through sale or gift. So uh, we reviewed um, mostly uh, you know, the, what Pinellas County had included in their, their, their draft ordinance um, as well as um, the state guidance. Um, and we did put together um, a very short property rights element. When we first took this to uh, the Planning and Zoning Board, they uh, recommended denial because they um, were concerned about uh, the issue of you know balancing language that was included, um, we voluntarily took that back to the board um, last month and um, you know, recommended that we just we strike that language out. Uh, so the ordinance that's before you does show the strike throughs. Um, it also includes um, some additional language under um, policy 1.1.1 number four, just to expand that property can be owned by an entity, not just a, a, a person uh, at the recommendation of one of the board members. So with those changes, the Planning and Zoning Board did recommend approval. Um, and with that, uh, staff recommendation is to approve the ordinance as amended by, recommended for amendments by the Planning and Zoning Board. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna to go to public comments. Do we have any public comments on this item? Any public comments on the property rights? Here none. Uh, the chair will detain a motion. Motion to approve the latest version. Second. Okay. Uh, go to our commission comments. Um, Ms. Vinson, I believe this subject has been discussed so many times in Tallahassee. Is that the final thing that? Uh, 
they came <laughs> up with. I, I mean, I've been hearing that for many, many years. I was just wondering. It, it is today. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, it seems like these things kind of come full circle, and I, I wouldn't be surprised at another legislative session to see it stricken or changed. Or, but this is what the law is today. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be included into our comprehensive plan now that we're doing the updates? Well, yes, we'll have to maintain this as, you know, as an element to the comp, unless something changes between it, now and when we finish that, but yes, that would have to. Is that be going to be a separate element? The, the, the state does require that it be a separate element. So it's literally a one page element at okay. this point, so. That's all I have. Any other commission comments? I have some. Yeah, the, it, initially I wasn't sure what to make of this, but in reading in detail of it, well, I, I can understand it's almost uh, a calibrating uh, mm -hmm. sort of element to kind of remind people both ways. Right. Uh, there is property rights, right. but there are zoning and land use that has to be followed. Yes. And I think that's extremely helpful. I also had an issue with the uh, balancing, and, and I wasn't sure how <clears throat> we would have to have criteria to applying it, and it just complicated it. So I think this is very simple, clear, understandable, and, and I'm, a, I'm supportive of this version of it. So thank, thank you. Thank you. It's a very clear document. I like that. <laughs> Any other comments? No. A roll call, please. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Tarkani? <coughs> yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Yes. Next is item number 13, the resolution 2021-62, the application 2183, condition of use for outdoor storage for uh, 159 East Oakwood Street. This is quasi-traditional. City Attorney, if you please read the title and explain the process again. Resolution number 2021-62, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, approving application number 21-83, requesting conditional use approval to allow for outdoor storage located at the southwest corner of South Safford Avenue and East Lime Street in the T4B residential and industrial slash office transect of the special area plan, providing for findings, providing for conditions, and providing for an effective date. This is also a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest this evening? I, I do. It, it's uh, my parents, so I'm going to recuse myself from this vote tonight. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anyone else wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest this evening? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak this evening on this item, if you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So sworn. Staff may make their presentation. Good evening. This is application 21-83. Uh, this is a location of the site. This is at um, 159 East Oakwood. It's actually two, two parcels. This is 159 East Oakwood, and then this is a, I'll call it a vacant parcel uh, to the north. So uh, you have Oakwood and Lime Street, so it's the entire frontage here. Uh, the property um, is in our community redevelopment district, the, and the, the transect zone is T4B, residential and industrial office. Um, the current use of the property, the entire prop the primary use of the property is the architectural salvage business at 159 East Oakwood. Um, in, in the past, um, recent, the, the activities of outdoor storage have uh, spilled over onto the adjacent property to the north, um, and it also has a couple of uh, storage units on it that um, have not are that do require permitting so the the applicant is here to uh, 
go through the process to, to get this cleaned up, essentially. Um, it does, outdoor storage in the district does require conditional use. So that is the primary uh, purpose of the application tonight. Um, so the north lot, um, again, this is the area that's, there's a couple of storage containers here. And there's a lot of things, outdoor mat materials that are being stored outdoor on the site. Um, just some uh, photos, um, and these are the storage containers. They do have a great mural on them. Um, this is from Lime Street looking south. Um, and so you can see some of the just various things. These are all things that are associated with their salvage business, but it is being stored outdoors um, in an unscreened manner. And so and if there's also been things um, kind of between the chain link fence in the, in the building furniture along here um, in the past. Um, there, you know, there's some signage issues that um, you know, have, need to be correctly you know, permitted. Um, so the other thing that I want to make a distinction about is that outdoor display of merchandise is not a permitted use. So they can, you know, the merchandise needs to be inside. They can outdoor store things, um, but it's not outdoor display, you know, like you see down at the sponge docks, that's not allowed in the, in the district. Um, just some additional photos. Um, again, so this is the overlay kind of showing the, the current condition. Um, you do have some natural screening um, from the property to uh, adjacent. Um, and then this is the south property again, just kind of overlaid the survey onto the aerial photograph. So to kind of cap, uh, what the applicant would be required to do would be to screen any of the areas where, you know, where materials are being stored outdoors um, on the site. So this is the, 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 the actual architectural salvage building, this area which had been used in the past for kind of outdoor display of merchandise, um, you know, as an advertising mechanism, I get it, um, but that's not allowed. Um, so it needs to be inside of the building and anything that's being stored outside um, does need to be fully screened from view. The applicant had proposed um, up to a six foot chain link fence with, with fabric. Um, and then as an alternative, they, they had also proposed uh, some landscaping along. <coughs> this is a, uh, they would gate this area. This is an existing parking area. Um, so they would, had proposed a, a solid landscape barrier as, as, as an alternative. Um, under our conditional reviews, uh, conditional use review criteria, um, as I stated, it does, the smart code does require the screening of outdoor storage. Um, we are recommending uh, screening of all outdoor storage using uh, the proposed landscaping opaque fence or a combination at a minimum feet, a minimum height of at least five feet. Um, and I'll, the Planning and Zoning Board made some changes to this recommendation, so I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the, the district is a, it's a mixed use district. Um, it does allow for, you know, industrial uses, commercial uses and, and residential. It's really a transitional area. Um, so, you know, screening just kind of helps enhance compatibility for the general area. Um, there's no issues with consistency with the comprehensive plan um, and the underlying uh, special area plan for this district. It does envision this type of use. And uh, we don't think that there's any impacts to historical or environmental resources. Um, as it's, you know, keeping it screened will, you know, positively, you know, affect property values in the area and keep it, keep it neat and tidy. Um, we don't, uh, would not adversely affect the city's ability to provide public facilities and it does provide for orderly development. It is a redevelopment and an infill kind of redevelopment use of the property. So the staff recommendation is to approve, uh, we had six conditions, um, all outdoor storage on the subject property um, and on the property at 159 East Oakwood shall be screened with an opaque fence or landscaping of at least five feet in height, unscreened um, outdoor and open storage and or outdoor display, unscreened outdoor or open storage or outdoor display is prohibited. Uh, the applicant shall obtain a building permit for the unpermitted structures, including the storage containers on the subject property uh, the applicant shall obtain a sign permit and or necessary building permits for any unpermitted signage ex existing on the property at 159 East Oakwood Street. All Brazilian pepper shall be eradicated um, and the property maintained free of this species. 
and then the conditional use would expire within one year if a building permit is not issued for the property. I'll talk a little bit about number six um, uh, after I discuss the planning and zoning board recommendations. Planning and zoning board did uh, review this and they did recommend approval and they had a rec couple of recommended changes. They were not crazy about landscaping. They just felt that as, as a allowing that to, to meet the screening requirement, they preferred the no pig fence. Um, I think they felt that long-term maintenance with landscaping can become problematic and felt the fence was a little more of a permanent um, solution to the screening issue. They also recommended um, adding condition number seven, and I think this is good, that the outdoor storage use shall be part of an accessory to the existing architectural salvage business. So you don't want to just put storing anything in boats and everything else. It really needs to be related to the primary business at 159. So we think that was a good recommendation. Going back to condition number six, I do want to um, clarify this a little bit. This is a standard condition. Um, what I would recommend is that since we do have a, um, you know, an outdoor storage situation that we do need to get into compliance, we would recommend that this um, be amended to basically say that the, um, the conditional use, all conditions of the conditional use um, must be um, implemented within 120 days of approval. Um, there, the conditional use expiration is in the code. It doesn't need to be restated in, the, in, in this. So I would recommend that we amend that number six condition to just basically allow for 120 days for compliance. Uh, with that, I will um, stop and answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Mr. Jell, I got a question to ask. Yes. Uh, Ms. Vincent, I have three questions. Uh, you kind of addressed the one already, I think. How visible these containers will be from the street? And by placing the fans, the five-feet fans, is that going to be covering that? The um, I don't. The five-foot fence probably wouldn't. Um, the the containers themselves are don't necessarily need to be screened. They're they're kind of their own screening because things are inside the containers. Okay. So um, and they're they just need to be properly permitted and, and so that they're anchored on the site. So that's not an issue. Uh, d does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. But they're not going to be, uh, things are not going to be visible from the street? Correct. Okay. Uh, are you, is that going to be any drainage issues? I know that it's going to be a lot of grass area. Uh, they're not proposing to increase any impervious surface, uh, so there's no, there's no no anticipated drainage issues when it went through the technical review committee. Okay. Uh, does the optical agree with the conditions, the six uh, conditions uh, recommended by staff and seven by uh, the planning and zoning board. I will have to defer to the applicant uh, who is he, here? He's here. He's here. Oh, here? here. Yeah. Okay. So. Would you please, uh, if you agree with the conditions placed by staff and the planning and zoning board? Oh yeah, sure. Would you please come to the podium, <laughs> state your name, and yeah, just please. Well, and Mr. Carr, I don't believe you were sworn in when I did the swearing in. Can you just raise your right hand? Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. And the answer is yes, right? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Dalton. Yeah, just one. I, I think I missed it. I think you went over it, Renee. But just what number seven is going to exclude? I know architectural salvage is kind of broad as far as what might be stored. Um, so what's so, something that wouldn't be allowed to be stored there? Yeah. It, it, Boats, you know, vehicles, that kind of stuff. Backing in a trailer or something. Exactly, okay. exactly. All right, thank you. Any other questions for staff? I do. Um, I, I um, thanks for the uh, staff report and also appreciated the PNZ weighing in on this. Uh, um, I think that was good. I've gone through the uh, special area plan myself. I don't see any issues and, and um, I understand uh, what we need to do here this evening, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, would the applicant like to make a presentation or have any questions for staff? Thank you, Mr. Carr. Any uh, members of the public wishing to speak on this item? Paniotis Puyas, 595 Peninsula Avenue. Uh, this application was presented to the P&Z Board on November 15th, 2021. There were clear violations of the property. It was not in the proper use of the zoning it was originally listed. Okay, uh, Ms. McNeese even stated at the PNZ board, uh, they wanted to make this property, property legitimate. So where have the, the fines and the penalties been on this 
property the whole time since they've been using it improperly. And I understand it's special treatment around here. Mr. and Mrs. Carr, they're great people to the community, but they are receiving special treatment because their son is a commissioner. Commissioners recusing themselves at times helping others recuse themselves as well. So this seems to be favors going back and forth. Now, the city's aware of the Brazilian tree peppers back on the 15th of November. And I'd like to be able to come up here. We are, during, we are under a quasi-judicial hearing to tell the truth how long this property's been sitting there in violation. So we can start going back and racking up the fines and start treating people the same. Now, Obviously, this is a case of selective and negligent enforcement because prior to DeSantis's uh, anonymous, no more anonymous tips, that property wasn't in compliance. And yet, Mr. Gasson and Mrs. Hughes, they ride up and down Safford Avenue plenty of times. They could have saw it and been proactive, but yet they didn't. Now, the citizens don't like commissioners and their families receiving special treatment and obviously getting a different set of rules. We resent that, especially when those same commissioners come up here and say that they don't have nothing to gain from being up here. So, and we talk about walkability. Uh, right there, you're about to put a blight in that area. Yeah, it's been used as a storage, but it's obviously was zoned for residential and a business spot. The person who bought heavily air a little bit north of there, plans to open up a bar or some type of uh, drinking restaurant too. So you guys claim to want walkability and to promote the trail, to promote businesses, but that's not promoting <coughs> the trail. Just seems you guys get to pick and choose depending who owns the properties. So, and what I would do, we hear staff all the time come up here and say, especially these last four or five applications, how the Planning and Zoning Board approves recommendation. We did not hear that in that big apartment complex that the Planning and Zoning Board wanted to deny the application. So this board has an opportunity to go against the Planning and Zoning Board. Now what I would do is I would deny this project. Code enforcement is well aware. You don't need anonymous tip now. Start finding the property till they remove all that stuff off that property, just like you would do to anybody else. Then they can reapply again. Get the property owners to make an agreement on a settlement, whether it be a couple thousand dollars or whatever it is. The, the fine's paid off. And then they can apply again and not receive special treatment just like anybody else. We're all citizens of Tarpon Springs. We resent the fact that you commissioners come up here and say there's no personal gains for your families, but there is, <clears throat> and it's an absolute shame. So let's treat everybody the same. Let's get code enforcement out there to do their jobs. And this anonymous tip stuff where you guys seem to pick and choose to you know, pick on individuals in Tarpon Springs is gonna come to an end. Thank you. I do. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. So sworn. Anita Protus, 901 Bay Shore. First of all, it's the city's fault. If our code enforcement didn't grab it, then you pay the fine because it's been in business for a long time, and it's a good business on the trail. This business, you need to go in there and see what they've got in there. It's unbelievable. The paraphernalia from Old Tarpon, enough, is like a museum. We have one of these on uh, South uh, Pinellas Avenue as you go down to the sponge docks, the same type of business. I didn't know all of this till tonight. It's, this business is clean. People on the trail see it, they come back to buy stained glass, to buy beautiful wood, to buy beautiful tables, things that they like to put in their home. It looks like a museum. And if they didn't realize they had uh, violated the law and the city didn't do anything, then the city pays the fine, not them, because the city's at fault for not stopping it at the beginning. I don't 
run around with these people. I know who they are. And we can put the blame and make accusations. But accusations are cheap. And you hurt good people. This is a good business. And I've written Architectural Digest. I've written Southern Living. And I've written Southern Homes about this business, telling them what an asset it is to Tarpon, what it brings to Tarpon, and this is a Tarpon taxpaying citizen that's opened it. So please pass it tonight, because I don't want these magazines to think I'm a liar. Thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item? <coughs> Mr. Eisner, if you could raise your right hand to be sworn. Surely. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? It is. So Thank sworn. you. So I'm listening to what's going on here, and uh, I heard Mr. Paniotis say something that I need to capitalize on. I just recently got a call from a resident on Seabreeze. Name is uh, Desiree uh, Draxton, I believe. De um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But she put two parking spots of cement right next. She needs the extra parking for her two kids. Mr. Eisner, I do apologize for interrupting, but what does this have to do with the current conditional use permit that's before the board? Well, I'm going to get to that. Okay. So she was not given anything, but she has, to, she has, I think it's like $20,000 worth of fines, and uh, she needs to have this immediately torn up. So I need to go back to what Mr. Paniotis said. Is there, a, this has not been something that has just happened yesterday. <clears throat> this has been going on for a long time. This is no offense of anybody's parents or commissioner's parents, but there should be fines done for this dating back to when this happened. Everybody's been driving through this. So um, if, if we have a policy in town that things have to be torn up and then a permit to be reapplied, that should be applied for everybody, not just for the slim few. So I tend to agree with what was said. This is nothing to do with a personal attack. It's what's fair for, um, you know, this particular case is no different than what this poor girl Desiree has to do. I think she went to rent a jackhammer this weekend to break something up because she didn't want to get hit. Uh, she's in, in the midst of a refinance, so that was my analogy. It's, it's, it's similar. We have to be fair to all the residents. It's not picking on one and and, and leaving someone else to just run rampant. So thank you for listening. Have a good night. Any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item this evening? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Okay, back to us. The uh, chair will detain a motion on that. A uh, motion to approve resolution 2021-62 application 2183 conditional use for outside storage 159 East Oakwood Street based on the PNZ board's recommendations in addition to the staff's recommendation of um, requiring 120 days to uh, obtain compliance with the items that require permitting. Second. Any commission comments? Any other comment, man? Go I would ahead. just note that this uh, property within the special area plan has a permitted use by right for industrial uses. Um, so it's not as if it's some booming residential area. Um, there are some you know, mixed uses within the zoning code, but primarily uh, this property, in my opinion, is more valuable from an industrial standpoint, which is a permitted use. Any other comments? Commissioner Vatikiaris. I, I do. I just wanted to... Um to, to kind of explain, because I don't think uh, Ms. Vincent got into the report that much, but when you read the reports for the purpose of the residents, is that it breaks out what the uh, conditional use is for as far as the outside storage, and then it, it mentions signs and also uh, shipping containers that require permits. So I think that's what that 120-day uh, adjustment was made into what the uh, original recommendation was. Thank you. Any other commission comments? And roll call. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapenny? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes. Okay, now we're going to uh, item number 14, which is the resolution 2021-58, Fordham Euro Grant. 
program. Senior Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Resolution 2021-58, a resolution of the City of Turpin Springs Board of Commissioners establishing a special area plan SAP photo mural grant, establishing application and guidelines for the administration of the grant and, and establishing an effective date. And staff report. Thank you, Mayor and Board of Commissioners. Karen Lemons, Economic Development Manager. I'm here to present um, a new incentive program for the, it actually will encompass the CRA and the SAP. The purpose tonight, this resolution is just for the SAP. Um, this is um, a, a grant that's been discussed at the BOC meeting in September. Um, there's a map in your backup that shows the area of the SAP. Um, we're, the grant is encouraged to um, promote for building owners of commercial and mixed-use properties to beautify the exteriors of their buildings and to present um, a more um, visually creative and artistic and historical presentation for our, our locals and our tourists. So with all the applications and the processes in your backup, so I'll just briefly go through the process for you. Um, we're following the guidelines uh, that the BOC set that the program be 50% reimbursable to a maximum of $2,500, meaning that if the applicant would spend $5,000 or more, they would be reimbursed $2,500. Um, the eligible applicants would be the owners of the buildings, commercial or mixed-use properties within the SAP. Um, the Public Art Committee would review and approve the proposed mural design or uh, the historical photograph uh, we did present the program to the PAC at their November meeting and they, um, they supported it. Um, we've got in here that the murals or the photograph cannot contain any letters, words, numbers, figures, or logos, any kind of advertising for the business or the adjacent business. And there can be no alcohol, tobacco, or anything offensive um, on the design. We're suggesting that the building owner be responsible for maintaining the mural or the photo for a minimum five-year period. Um, part of the pack review is to ensure that the materials are durable and that um, they're high quality and that they will last. Um, another provision is if the mural or the photo is removed within one year of completion by means other than an unavoidable accident or a casualty, then that the grant be refunded. Um, spoken with members of the Historical Society, and they are willing to participate in this program through providing access to their archives for photographs. So if somebody has an idea they'd like to have a historical photograph on their building, but they don't have access to any photographs, we'll refer them to the Historical Society, and they can look through their archives or be assisted with that. Um, the application process is simple. It's, it's um, like our other grants. Um, the the difference with this one is that the design will first go to the Public Art Committee for approval, then it will go to our TRC for final approval. There is a provision for appeal that we've included that if the PAC would um, deny the design that the applicant could appeal back to the Board of Commissioners. And then finally regarding the funding, this grant would come out of the general fund. There currently is, um, our Greek Town grant is the other grant that comes out of the general fund. We do have uh, $42,000 available in that, in that grant. That's a carryover of 17,000 from the last budget. And this year's budget, we allocate another 25,000. So um, you could increase that if you'd like, or that budget could be used for, uh, for this grant as well. So with that, if there's any questions, I'm happy to um, answer anything. Thank you. We're going to go to public comments. We'll come back to you if you have questions, please. Are there any public comments on this item? Do we have any public comments on this item? Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, the chair will take a motion on this item, which is the uh, resolution 2021-58. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Ms. Lemons, I have a question. Uh, I think this is a very good program to beautify the buildings and to provide financial assistance to the owners to be uh, to encourage them to do that. My question is, did you get a chance to talk to the owners and see if anyone is interested to pay the kind of money for placing the art on their uh, on their building? I have one pending that's waiting for approval that's ready to go. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Good news. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same thing that we talk about now is going to be for the CRA that we're going to be talking about later. So the same thing applies for that as well. Same process, same guidelines, same application. Except it's just different budget. Correct. Okay. Um, so you have one person that is interested to do that? <laughs> Good. What's your next question there? Who is it? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I think you want to know, right? Uh, I do, but I'll <laughs> ask later, so thank you. That's all I have. Any other questions, Vice Mayor? Yeah, I've, I've actually talked to three different business owners who are interested in it. Um, so I, I do think it's going to be a, an attractive um, piece to encourage some art when uh, historic photos throughout the community. Uh, one thing I do, do want to confirm is that when it goes to the Public Art Committee, they're not utilizing their, their ordinance for this, correct? Well, the, the review guidelines, and as we discussed with the Public Art Committee, are those three reviews that they have there. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, we did discuss that because I thought, well, there could be maybe a group of high school students who want to do a, a mural on something, and they said they would really encourage that, um, that this isn't necessarily, um, that there could be other types of applications that they don't normally get. Yeah, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's certain <laughs> standards with the Public Art Committee that you have to have a, it's a certain type of artist or a certain type of uniqueness and things along those lines that a photo may not be necessarily unique. It could be in a historic society, it could be hanging somewhere else, and it can be on the side of the building too. I guess that's what I'm just trying to understand. Um, does that make sense, what I'm trying to clarify, Mark? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that the standards they're reviewing is what's in this application review, not necessarily what the standards are for the Public Art Committee for their art projects. Yeah, they're following the guidelines that okay. are presented as by the resolution. All right. Th Karen, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and putting this together and working with the Public Art Committee and the Historic Society and, and obviously the, all the different things that you put together and um, getting this written with, the I believe, the city attorney's assistance. So um, I appreciate you doing it in a timely fashion and bringing it back to us. I think it's going to be a great asset for our city. Yeah, I didn't have any questions. I just want to say thank you to uh, Ms. Lemons. I was really impressed with the comprehensiveness of the actual application itself on the presentation, and this is definitely something to be excited about, so thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Petikior, I didn't see his light on. No, I, I know I have to, I'm doing <laughs> it right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, um, you. thank you, Ms. Lemons. Um, uh, Commissioner Carr, or Vice Mayor Carr brought up a point. This says mural in uh, historic photo, um, it, it, is there a separate mural or is this part of it as well? Yeah, it's it's one program, but they can have a mural, which can be anything okay. according to the criteria, or a photograph, and I know the, the board's direction was a historical photograph, so the photograph would need to be right, a... Right, I understand that part, yeah. but there was the mural, which is a little more artistic, and, and um, I, I guess Vice, Vice Mayor Carr, you asked uh, the city manager to get a little more clarification on that as far as the public art committee's role in this. Is that, is that right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and I guess I've, maybe I'm just, when they're reviewing the photograph, we talked about that, that it's just to confirm that this is actually a historical photograph and not something that was photoshopped that, that the Historical Society has yes. reviewed it. So that's, that's what they would be looking at if it's a photograph. We don't have distant relatives in the photograph that was not there before, that sort of thing, yeah. I understand. All right, that's the easy question. Um, there are a couple of things, and, and I'm sure we've probably have gone through this, and I don't want to overthink this. As far as the, the contingency on the sale of a building, I know we are saying five years. Um, how did we handle the facade improvements? Was there a, a, a minimum requirement that they maintain ownership, or that was if we just wanted to, we just wanted to approve the look of the building? Yeah, the facade grants, they don't have any, none of the, none of the grants have any um, time limit or period of time, even for the, you know, the restaurant grants, so we don't require that a business be there for, you know, two years or three years or something um, before they move. So, um, this one, we looked at other cities and what they have, and a lot of them had requirements for a, a time frame, so that's why we put that in. No, I think it's good. I, I just, uh, the grant is, does it run, and maybe this would be a question for our, our city attorney, does this, is this grant for the property owner, or is it run with a building? Um, it's the current owner, but is it is it part of an improvement to the building that has to remain for that five years? In other words, there's some kind of a, 
uh, an encumbrance on the building that it remains there for five years, or there's if nothing a new in there. Comes in in two years and they don't like it, they just can paint over it. I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, we didn't have any encumbrance in this for if if a mural gets put on a building and then two years later the building owner sells it. So no, we don't we don't have anything that runs with the building. Okay. Um, I think I've got a solution here. And then as far as the $2,500 matching, matching grant, um, some is that, that's per building, right? In other words, they couldn't do two murals on the same building, or could they? It's meant for one, one, one building, mural? so it's 2500 okay. whether you have one wall or two walls. It would be they could have two murals on the same building? They could have two on the same and building. Each, and for each one, they could get up to $2,500? This is meant for one building. This is for a maximum of $2,500? Per building. Per building. So let's say, assuming that they had two murals, $3,000 a piece, that came up to 6000 they could get $2,500. Right. Okay. All right. Um, All right, and, and I, I, like I said, I don't want to overthink this. I think uh, I'm going to support this. Let's just move ahead with it, and if there's issues later on with some of the things I brought up, we can always come back and make an adjustment on that. Um, and as far as the Public Art Committee, I've spoken to Ms. Jennings, and, and they run a very sober operation there. I don't think that they're out to do anything that is beyond uh, reasonable, so I have full confidence in the Public Art Committee to handle this properly. Thank you. Any other comments? And roll call. Commissioner Vadikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Loses? Yes. Okay, now we're going back into the item number A, which is the approval for initial projects to be funded by American Rescue Plan Mayor, Act. May I have a point of privilege of taking a short break? Okay, sure. Before we get started. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Or, or even sooner would be fine. Uh, Thank you. 35. Yeah? 35.
Okay, we are now going back to the item number eight, which is the approval for initial projects to be funded by the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, we already finished with the uh, staff report, finished with the uh, public comments, and we're now, we have a motion on the floor and a second. And we are continue with the uh, commission comments and we left off with the uh, commission Donovan. And just to clarify, Mayor, the motion on the floor is to approve everything, right? That was the yes, motion? Yes, that was the, uh, okay. the motion. And we also okay. have a second. Okay. I was done with my questions earlier. Um, my, my feelings on this, if, if you go to page 39 of the backup, you see that long list of all the potential projects from all the potential departments. Um, you know, the one that really stuck out to me was over $20 million of potential stormwater infrastructure improvements that could be done with this money. And I'd say that's probably the biggest um, complaint feedback we get is, you know, flooding. And there's all that money sitting there to potentially address it. And then, you know, if we exhaust it all on these projects immediately, it becomes, you know, like one of the, one of the projects in there, for example, is $10.5 million. Um, so if we move forward with this one, I mean, you're already teetering out to just say, hey, maybe we can get that one done. Um, so this is something I'd like more resident feedback on. I'd like more discussion on from us. Um, I do like the idea, though, moving forward with two and three. Uh, I don't want to pinch pennies when it comes to public safety. And I mean, we, we can't have our public safety building with all their sensitive information, their sensitive IT infrastructure, you know, leaking water all over the place. So I'm fine to move forward with two uh, and three tonight. Okay. Commissioner Vettik, you had your light on the last time. I, I have some comments. Huh? I have some, oh, I have some comments. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things. One, um, someone said some of these things were budgeted. Is that accurate? I believe that we Any talked about things? the... Uh, we had uh, talked same. about two of them in the budget time that we were going to use the resources for the American Rescue Fund. They weren't in the budget because we'd have to cut some some projects that were important, but, and, and mainly talk about the, the one, the small, but the big one is the roof and the chiller system. Right. But we, we had said at budget time yeah. that we would, with the money for the American Rescue Plan for lost revenue, that would be an eligible expense under there. Instead of taking 900,000 out of your budgeted projects, that, that the American Rescue Fund would be a good avenue for that money. And we, we discussed that when we finalized the budget that we we're gonna bring back forward that money for that. But, but um, no, and I remember the, the, the uh, I had a problem not funding the police, uh, the public safety building, but out of these five items, um, which ones are in the budget right now? Any of them? No. Okay. Um, also, um, the mayor asked about the budget advisory uh, committee, and I didn't quite catch everything that you were saying, that they had gone through this once before with regard to the budget or... In the November, no, at their November meeting before I brought it to you, because I know if I brought it to you, you would send me back to the budget advice. So I brought it to their last meeting in November, discussed the strategy, discussed everything we discussed about the strategy, what we're doing for citizen engagement, um, the staff list, what that meant. It wasn't necessarily, we're not gonna necessarily bring forward a lot of those things, because remember, you asked us, and we plan to do some of the items on that list we think there's other grant funding or other opportunities right. and we want to rank the projects that we don't want you to do that if there are other things for instance the state money they're giving the state money that's separate for infrastructure a lot of our seawall money that's in there we think that we'll be eligible and and our staff our grant committee will be looking why it's a list but we might not bring forward all those things on the list because there may be an opportunity or we at least to try first for instance on the sea walls and a couple other things to pursue other funds of money and other grants that are available so we don't deplete this money or the other money so we're evaluating all those things now and do and uh, doing that list so we talked to the budget advisory board about our strategy what we're doing and we also brought to them these five items and why the urgency or the need we thought so at least we could start some of these projects now I mean we we've got a time period we've got to commit them by 2024 and do them by 20 it's a time period but we thought these were essential to start now for the reasons I gave we brought those and the reasons to the budget advisory board um, and the budget advisory board unanimously um, approved 
um, the concept of bringing these forward to you for approval. So we did this um, in advance uh, before we brought that to you. Right. Yeah, I, I know the uh, stormwater, they're uh, more likely to get funded by grants than yes. many of the, even the sewer. Yes. Uh, so that, yes. that seems to be the thing. And I don't want to hang, hang the city's hat on grants for uh, stormwater, but it should go in as some kind of a weighting as far as depending on the priority of the uh, project. Um, I, I wanted to, um, as far as the, uh, the backup information, I, I think it's excellent backup information. I like the idea that there's a, a memo for each one of these items. The um, number two, the, um, uh, as far as the, um, um, getting the priorities from people, we, we have, I mean, sometimes we have to do it the old fashioned way. I mean, I understand we've got all this technology, but we can't just be assumed that um, if all we have is a hammer, everything begins to look like a nail. And sometimes we, we've got to kind of go back and we've got a very strong organization in the community right now, the Greater Tarpon Springs Community Council that's consistent of about 15 uh, philanthropic and civic organizations. I think a nice presentation of this program with them have some forms that we've developed to give them so that each of those 15 can go back to their, their own organizations with their membership, have them uh, uh, you know, canvas their membership to come up with some ideas and then feed them back in and then we'll have that. I, I think to wait for getting comments on through the um, Connect Tarpon Springs and some of the other things that we do um, is, is, um, is, is, is just, not, I don't think it's gonna deliver everything that we need to do. We also need to have a, a town hall at some point. And um, I know the Ministerial Association was very helpful, but I really um, encourage getting, go back and do it the old fashioned way. They meet the first Monday of every month. Uh, Mr. Haddad is the chairperson of that organization. He works extremely well with the city. I think that they would be very helpful. Um, and, and once the holidays are over as well. Um, so I, I've seen them do things for preparing for the holidays and I think the results were very good. The, um, I, I wanted to go through these items. The, um, the, the, um, the water and sewer on Bayshore uh, septic to sewer, have we done the design on that yet? No, but Is Paul, that been, you wanna talk about that project? Yeah, thanks Paul. The short answer is no, we're currently in that phase of it now. We're doing this in parallel. You know, these grants sometimes make us put that cart in front of the horse. And so is there a percentage that you can say, or, or, or you really haven't, you, I mean, you do need to do surveying or? or yes, we okay. do. And, and the method, the final method of connection is going to need to be determined, whether it be a conventional gravity or um, individual right. pump right. stations. And that can make the cost really okay. vary. What, what I would, uh, recommend at least and I think all of these are not they're not like it's not like they're not needs they are needs uh, we've got more needs and we have money and I understand that but um, I think the city manager brought this forward along with Mr. Smith as a very high priority I've seen this thing on our books for a very long time I've heard the residents thinking that this was going to be done as part of the Bayshore project this time they were a little surprised that it wasn't and they're kind of wondering about that still so I, I think one solution may be to uh, approve at least um, some money on getting started with the design on this, uh, like we've done, for example, the, um, the flooding at the end of MLK Spring Boulevard until we do the bigger picture to see how it fits in. And then um, by the time, while we're working on that, um, do the prioritization and see how this comes out with that. So I, at least I know City Manager, of course, I've spoken to you about this. You want to get started on some of these things. At least this is one solution, mm -hmm. uh, way to get it without just saying, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do this at all. Um, the new roof and the chiller on the, thank you, Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. The new roof and the chiller um, on the public safety building, to be honest with you, I kind of cringe every, and, and I didn't need the photographs. Um, I, I think that, uh, 
it just needs to be done. It's, we've had it 20 years now, and, and it's salt in the air, and all kinds of things happen, and, and, and I understand the preventive maintenance, and, and that needs to be a separate discussion, but I really think that we need to move on with that thing, and, and I was not um, happy to the extent I could be without it not being uh, budgeted. The uh, mental health um, treatment and crisis intervention, I, I really think that's important. Um, and and uh, we had the incident downtown, the unfortunate incident where uh, a, a young person was uh, killed, and, and I'm sure that created some um, needs of this sort of um, uh, training and counseling in our, not just our public safety, but our, our uh, emergency services, but also in our police department as well. The, um, the resurfacing and uh, restriping of the um, Court Street parking lot, um, that, that is kind of a, a maintenance thing, and, and um, I, maybe that would be something that we could, we could uh, unless there's something that you're not telling us or Mr. Function would like to share in addition to what we've seen um, as far as it being critical that we do that. I think it needs to be done. I even the court street, court, the East, East Court Street itself, as well as the parking lot, everything. I know some of that's already been done, but, but, um, but I'd like to keep up the appearances on that. Um, but I don't, I'm not hard on that if the commission didn't want to do that one. Um, and then the citywide advertising, I had a discussion with the city manager on that. Um, and I understand the idea there, and he did assure me that the, um, the Chamber of Commerce and also the Tarpon Springs Merchants Association would be brought in on the discussions, which I was happy to hear that. Um, the other issue that I would like to at least get addressed in that discussion as well is some kind of directional um, signage or something to help direct people to one part of the city or another where those events are going on, that's always an issue. I mean, we can get people into town, but sometimes we can't get them to the right spot. We do have the directional signs, but, but we need something more than that from the highway. Um, but that's something, a minor part of this program. And, um, and then also, um, I caution the, um, the city manager, uh, for example, when we first came out of COVID, the biggest complaint that I heard at the sponge docks anyway, was that, uh, especially uh, on some of the wor working up to holidays, they couldn't take any more people. We were just overwhelmed with the number of people down there. It was just way, way too crowded. And we heard this, this same issue with the uh, seafood festival this last time, wh where it was done was way too small for the number of people that showed up. So I, I think it's a good idea. And um, as far as the uh, COVID relief, um, that $100,000 for the advertising is, is strictly out of uh, the revenue recovery <coughs> part of the act. I, I strongly support that. The, um, um, the, um, the and, and, and many of these things are tied to that. The water and sewer on Bayshore, I just want to remind everybody that was a very, that's, that's a black and white statement. Water and sewer infrastructure is one of the, the key parts of this um, uh, American, th this uh, COVID um, uh, ARPA uh, funding. The last thing that I uh, pick up on what Vice Mayor uh, Carr brought up was the hospital, and I very much appreciate uh, Mr. Dunkel, who's the president and the CEO of the hospital, to send us this list, and I would like to have a, a discussion on that. Um, uh, maybe as an agenda item to see where that fits in. Maybe um, I talked to city manager. Maybe next week, I would request a, a, a an, in, an agenda item to discuss that, um, especially the part with the overhang. That's um, very much uh, COVID mitigation um, and and adapting the public building for uh, the contingency of an additional effects from a pandemic, which we don't have anything like that. Most of people coming to the hospital in a, in a hot situation where there's active um, COVID going on are not taken inside. They're actually looked at in the car and, and they're done at the emergency room. And this would be a way to expand the number of people that could be looked at one time, or at least waiting to be looked at 
rather than sitting in the parking lot in their car, they would be sitting under the shade. So that's something I would like to look at. Not part of what we're doing tonight, obviously, but next week. Um, so anyway, that um, I'm supportive of all of these right now. Uh, number one, um, we could hold the million dollars in abeyance, but at least approve some. It's just an idea, obviously. It's going to be up to the commission but to approve some funding to get started on the design until the priorities shake up and see where this falls out in that regard. So that's all I've got to say. Uh, the only other one would be number four, the resurfacing. Um, I, if we wanted to include that, fine, but if not, that's okay. Thank Finished. you, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Likurs, I'd like to state, uh, I'd like to say what I stated earlier, that I support all these proposed projects that you brought here I don't feel comfortable with the process that we use. Um, we should have a list that is price rise to see what projects that we're going to be doing. We got, we're very fortunate we got 12 million, we're going to be getting $12 million over two years. But we have projects that we're going to need over $50 million to be able to do them all. So we just can't do a piecemeal. We need to have a priority list based on the needs that we have. Those projects that you brought up before us, I think they all uh, very valid, they need to be done. And like the, uh, uh, the, uh, the project on the Bayshore, uh, it's been waiting for a long time. But, uh, and, and still, I mean, it, uh, it maybe it will, you'll be, you know, be high on, on the list to be done. Um, but the other, other projects that it should be done as well, we need to look at the whole thing and see if there's anyone left that we can help, I mean, the, the hospital as the vice mayor uh, CAR and Commission Vaticure, as mentioned earlier. We just can't say we put it on a budget. I mean, we're going to put it on the agenda next week to discuss it, not know what else that we have to do. I mean, this is, we're doing a piecemeal like this. We can't do that. We have to have a plan with what we're doing. The way we're doing it now, there's no plan at all. This is, all these projects are very, very good. They need to be done. But you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a roadmap to get there. That's what I need. Uh, we got $12 million, but we have enough projects. I mean, we have projects that we need over $50 million. We can't do them all. We can't do a few today and uh, four projects now, and then next week we're going to do the hospital, and then two weeks later we'll do another one. It's not going to be enough money. We can't work like this. This is, we're not managing well. This is what I'm trying to say. We need to do that differently. Mayor, may I have some? Yes, go ahead. Um, Mayor, I agree with you 100%, and I don't think anyone's saying that, that um, not to do that. However, some of these things, like, for example, the public safety building, I, I mean, you see the photographs. I, I just think that needs, that needs, it's got to be funded one way or the other. If we don't want to fund it through the ARPA money, then it's got to be funded some other way. We just can't. That's public safety. You're absolutely correct, right. Commissioner. And You're absolutely correct. It needs to be done. I see the pictures, and it kind of upsets me that we let the building to be in that kind of a terrible shape. But that's our fault for letting it be like this. But, Mayor, we, need to, we need to make sure that uh, we have enough money to do all these projects that we have. Mayor, I, what I'm trying to say is that if we're going to talk this way now, we need to kind of step back a couple of months and talk about some of the other things that we've approved within the money that we're getting annually through the budget. And we're not prioritizing those. You've said for several years we need to prioritize things. Correct. I've picked up on that and since I'm, I've been I'm commissioner. I'm still doing the same we thing. We haven't done it, yeah. whether it's this money or something else. So yes. my point is I, I agree with what you're saying. So let's do it. But in the meantime, I think that there's some fund, some basic things that that just need to get done. And, and that's all I'm getting at. I agree with the prioritization, but we should have... I, I don't want to belabor the point. I, I understand what you're saying, but the prioritization process should not be beginning with the COVID. It should have been started a long time ago, and we haven't done that at each budget cycle. So uh, it's a little frustrating for me to, to listen to this kind of discussion, and I agree with you, but it's hard for me to just say, well, we're not going to do these because we haven't prioritized. Well, we haven't prioritized anything up to this point, and now all of a sudden we're going to start prioritizing $12 million, we had this thing handed to us. This has been going on for some time. There's no feedback at all. 
and, and I think the city manager um, needs to do some more homework as far as how to get that, that uh, effort out. If, uh, if we want to defer this item for a couple of months, I have absolutely no problem with that, except I'm a little concerned about the public safety building if, if, the, if, the, if it just worsens there. It, it's our public safety building, it's emergency services. So um, I think w maybe that needs to be approved, but all of the other stuff, if you want to defer until we get a process in place, I'm all for that. But I think that process, prioritization process, needs to apply to everything uh, as far as our capital projects, not just this $12, $12 million. Well, and again, if we don't start do this priority list, we never will. And the only thing, the only, the only item that I am very, very concerned, and we should do that uh, immediately, is the mental health treatment because there's a crisis out there, and we don't want anything, and we don't want to lose anybody, any lives out there. And, and, and we should give them the help to do that. The, uh, and if I, this is what, $48,000. The other projects, we need to have a priority list, know where we're going to spend the money. It, that it, should not take forever to do this. Um, and we should have to get the input from the, uh, from the people. Maybe we should have a face-to-face -face meeting so people can then tell us exactly how they want the money to be spent, not just using the, uh, the website because not everybody is comfortable of doing that. Um, of course, the young people, they use that. But uh, we have many, many seniors. We have many people that are not uh, familiar using the website and the, uh, the social media. Face to face is what they want. They want to be able to ask questions. We can't just, because now we feel like uh, we, we haven't done anything to the, uh, to the public building for 20 years, we decided we must do tonight. <coughs> I, I don't see that. Same. You know? I, I don't want to so, say it. My uh, recommendation is to approve the one to provide help to the uh, mental health uh, uh, treatment, which is very, very, uh, it's a safety issue uh, to the people uh, providing the, uh, the services, the, the first respondents and the others would need to be deferred to make sure we have a process in place on how to do that. Any other comments? If not, we're going to call. Uh, yeah, the, the only thing I would say is just, and, it, and it's our fault for not making a, a formal motion, I guess, at the time, but in our budget work sessions, I do feel as though we made it, I, f I feel like we made a commitment to the public safety building for these ARPA funds. I think we kicked the can on it during one of our budget work sessions saying once that ARPA money comes through, at that time the dollar amount wasn't certain. Um, that's something that we can use for that. And then that freed up $900,000 of different projects for us to put forward and fund, that kind of thing. So I totally get where you're coming from with the priority list. Um, but just for, for me, the reason behind two and three, three, like you said, again, that's, that's immediate and that's a smaller dollar amount. Mm -hmm. But two, I feel like we did make a commitment during our budget work sessions. And again, it's, it's our fault for not solidifying it, making a motion, following up on it. Um, but I just feel like in our budget work sessions, we did say, hey, once we get that ARPA money, that's what we can use it for. Um, so I, I get where you're coming from. I respect you know, whether you change your mind or not on it, but um, I, I just feel like we did make that commitment. Commissioner, um, Mayor, I've got the green button. Push. Go ahead, Mr. LeCour. <laughs> I'd like to ask Commissioner Terrapani if he'd amend the motion I think two and three are most important. We can talk about the rest of the day, but if you'd amend the motion, see if we get a second to go for two and three, and then we can deal with the rest later. I think those are two more important. So move to amend the motion to include two and three to approve tonight. Second. If you include on the motion that we're going to create a prior list to work on the other projects that we... You have a date certain, Mayor? Uh, how long is going to need, you going to need, Mr. Lequeris? A couple months? Uh, Mayor, when we talked about citizen engagement, community engagement, we talked about doing a lot of things. We talked about months and months and through next year, through the next commission, many different ways. The citizen engagement was one we had and we started. There's a lot more down the line to do those things with. So, I mean, it depends. In, in our minds, in staff, you know, you talk about not lying to process. 
But in our process, if we are asked, we will tell you that it's months and months, whether it's going to clubs, whether it's going um, to the organization, Commission of Advocate, we plan to do all that things during that time as we evaluate uh, this money. But there will be things that jump out. But we'll do it any way you want. But um, again, I think our plans have been represented. I think we plan to do all of these things. Again, I gave you the reason why these were brought forward. So um, but there are plans um, to even do our own meetings, for instance, at the sponge docks, maybe downtown um, staff wise to get community input along with the other things. So, you know, these are planned over January, February, March, maybe April. So, but we'll change and do any way this commission wants, but um, there's a lot to do with it without setting a date certain um, to do these things. Uh, Mayor, I'm not sure I understand. May I ask the city manager a question? Go ahead. Uh, we're, you're prioritizing already. That's what you're doing with well, the staff. Yes. You just haven't brought the priorities forward yet. Correct. These are things that somewhere along the line, and, and I'll, I'll admit my memory isn't the greatest, but I, I believe what you're saying, that they have been discussed at some point, and these were somewhat urgent I, items to bring forward because they're needed much sooner than the, but than the time we'll be finishing our prioritization process. Is that correct? Yes. And I know I specifically asked you when we brought up the COVID money, we're not talking about spending all $12 million in the next three or four months, right? Correct. And you said absolutely not. So I agree with that. And, and, um, and, and um, uh, I'll, I'll honor what you're saying. I mean, as far as your request for two and three and Com Commissioner Terrapani has amended that, but I hope we kind of, if there's some prioritization that's gonna take a lot longer, there may be some things that can be obviously priorities that need to be done and they yeah. need to be brought back forward. I'll be bringing back sooner. Again, from a sustainability standpoint, from a, the main, one of the main purposes of the American Rescue Act, that number one is gonna, the number one on this list is gonna be number one online. Yeah, it's scheduled to do maybe in a year or two like that, but remember, if this gets moved up and done now, the project under it, Florida Avenue gets moved up. Florida Avenue phase two is a major money amount to do, that gets moved up and there's also a succession of things moving up. So, so yes, yeah, some things will be brought back sooner and that'll be one of them I'll bring back because right. that's gonna be, no matter how you prioritize things, it's gonna sit number one now. It was number one three years ago after Bay, once we decided to do Sea Breeze, um, the Bayshore thing stood out. So yes, yeah, some of them will come back sooner. And when we go through our list of, of priorities, you know, find the ones we'll ask to hold back on because we think there's other state grants, especially that, that big grant that the state just did that we're working with a Congress uh, representative and getting ready to apply for some of that money. And the seawalls are one of the things we're looking at. But if it looks like some of the other things on the list, um, again, we're actively looking on that list for other means to, to fund also, and when we give you the priorities, if we think we can get it from other sources, those won't be our priorities we'll be bringing to you. We'll be, you will be engaged in trying to get those grants. Yeah, just on a loose end, um, it, thank you for that. And then um, and Mr. Dunkel's list is, is important for the hospital, but given the, the climate of the discussion right now, I, I think it may not be a good idea to bring that forward for any discussion at this point until we have some more discussion internally with the staff and everything uh, ourselves. And, that, and, 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 you know, that is what we're looking for. We're looking for things at the hospital. My for instance, time. on the hospital one on the initial evaluation by me, the overhang, which we have on the top priority, if you're thinking about COVID and you're thinking about other outbreaks, the ability to, to put cover over that entire walkway, if we have to start lining people outside, doing evaluations outside, that would be the one that I think would most fit right now the COVID mode. But again, we're, we're, we're examining those things also, so. We'll, we'll wrap that up in the yeah. whole overall, if yeah. that's okay, to okay. wrap it up in the overall process. Yeah. Okay. We need to move Thank on. You. Mr. Liqueur, so give us a tentative day when you think you're gonna have the priority list with the public input, approximately. A few months, but I mean, again, public input's gonna continue after that. A few that, months, so. is that the end of uh, February? Well. 
I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that because, again, we're going to hit right at a time we're going to be changing boards. So, you know, we gotta, we got to evaluate that also. Mark, I need you to give us a date. Why don't you give me a date? I'll, I'll meet the date you meet. Okay. The end of February. Okay. Okay? Yes. All right. The 20th. I may be back sooner if some other things come out. At I may be February back sooner 20th. with some things. Is that so. good? You mean whatever, fe- whatever you say? Do you have a list by then with the public input, fe- so we can actually work on those projects? Fe- February for the entire twelve million dollars. Well, just to give us a list, that we can actually have a discussion on that. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd say February for a discussion, but again, yeah. I don't. I don't want to say, hey, here's how the twelve million dollars is going to be spent. Oh, by the way, two weeks from now, there's a new board. Um, okay. You know, so I'm, I, I would like, I, I mean, I'm fine to, again, to discuss it whenever um, and try to shape out that priority list. I'm good with that. Commissioner Terrapin, would you uh, modify your, your motion, <coughs> sure. if you would? Uh, I modify the motion to include items two and three for tonight and uh, bring back for discussion uh, how the city manager would like to discuss spending the balance of the $12 million. Is that good for you, Mayor? Is the second okay? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lozis? Yes. And now we're going to the item number nine, which is to authorize settlement of Code Enforcement Lien for uh, 987 Sunrise Drive. City Attorney, would you please present this item? Yes, so the city attorney's office is asking to obtain the commission's authorization to accept $5,000 as a settlement offer from um, Helmi Khalil on behalf of his wife, Hanan Bashai, who are the current uh, property owners of 987 Sunrise Drive in exchange for a partial release of the code enforcement board lien that's presently on the property. Um, by way of background, there's, this is in your backup materials as well, but in March 2016, the code enforcement board found that the subject property Um, which at the time was owned by the previous owners, uh, was in violation of four city codes, and then a lien was placed on the property in May of 2016. The property eventually came into compliance in May of 2019, and the current property owner bought the property knowing and subject to the lien on the property. Uh, Mr. Khalil recently contacted uh, Mr. Trask by email, made the settlement offer in the amount of $5,000 in exchange for a release of the code enforcement board lien, um, and for your information, the total due to the city as of December 31st, 2021 would be $94,815.99. The city attorney's office is recommending um, to, uh, in order to avoid uh, incurring additional attorney's fees and based upon the facts as they have been presented to the city attorney's office, um, to accept the settlement offer of $5,000 in exchange for the partial release. And I can answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Mike Geisner, 1515 Riverside Drive. Um, Been up here many times. I don't understand why we have a violation (coughs) um, at close to $100,000 and it's getting reduced down to $5,000. It reduces when we accept the $5,000 uh, bid like that, we just remove the fear of the $94,000. I don't understand why we go up that high and we wind up uh, settling low. I mean, it, 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 it removes any violation fear for people doing uh, damage to the city. Um, I, I just don't, I don't get it. So I understand that you'll probably accept it, but in the future we should maybe have lower the violations because this is just like a joke, you know? So that's, I, I don't understand how we could go from 94,000 down to 5,000. Do we have any other comments on this item? I hear none. The chair will retain a motion. Motion to approve the negotiated rate. Second. Any commission comments? I got a question, Mayor. Sure. Madam Attorney, what does the partial release mean? 
Um, the partial release is because the present property owner is not the violator on the property. A previous property owner is, and so the release that's executed is in favor of this property owner, so that we still have the ability to go over, go after the pre the previous property owner. But in regard to the property, there's no more liens, correct? Uh, no, this would this would um, absolve the lien uh, for this property owner. But not the property. Uh, well, it would absolve the lien for the property, but that's based on other information. So. Okay, so we could still we still potentially could uh, seek monies from the previous property owner. That's basically what it means. Correct. Got it. Thank you. And if I may add, usually that comes into effect when they want to do something else and that lien's out there. Um, they'll come, that, that person will come to us and want to get that settled because they can't do something with another piece of property. So that's one of the important things to realize. The original violator's not off the hook and we've got many settlements, uh, maybe not in the same year, but usually something happens and they want to clear clear their record and they'll come to us and we'll get money from the actual person who violated it. Gotcha, thank, thank you. you. I have a, a continuation to this question. The, um, so the, uh, the, the, uh, the previous owner is responsible for, for the lien. That's right? The previous property owner is responsible for the violation and the lien that was on the property, and correct. Mr. LeCour says that will, uh, it, it will have an obstacle if it decides to go and do, buy something else? Generally, yes, that would be what, what happens with property. And, and this is only for Pinellas County or the state of Florida? Uh, no, it would be, f f with code enforcement, it would be the state of Florida. State of Florida. Yeah, it's, it's and, and to some degree, it could be outside the jurisdictional boundaries, except for then we get into some murky water, but it is it is any real or personal property within the state of Florida for all intents okay. and purposes. I, and is that a way that somebody can research that? Specific or, to this property or? Or to any property I'm talking about, in, in, in any case, yeah. In general terms, for yes. any code enforcement lien that is on a property, if it's a non-homesteaded property or if that property owner owns other property or personal property, you can enforce the lien against some of the other properties. Got you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? <clears throat> Coach Vaticula. Uh, you, this whole thing just threw a wrinkle. First of all, I, I wasn't going to support this $5,000. Because, let me just back up, this is for Mr. Khalil that has owned it through a quick claim deed um, since, I think, 17. 2017, I believe. I might be wrong about that, or maybe that's when he purchased it. Um, no, I'm sorry, that's when Mr. Yacoub purchased it from Mr. Ludlow in 2017. Mr. Le Mr. Khalil just recently purchased it for Mr. Yacoub. Mr. Yacoub had it for a while, while uh, since the, the, uh, from 2016 is when the code enforcement lien came into effect under Mr. Ludlow, which was the original owner. Mr. Yacoub bought it in 2017, so Mr. Ludlow would be required for the fines between 2016 and 2017, and then the property came into compliance in 2019, and then at some point, Mr. Khalil, Mr. Khalil and that was, I would assume, under Mr. Yacoub, and then under some point, Mr. Khalil took ownership of the property under from Mr. Khalil, so Mr. Yacoub owes some money. So we're only forgiving that amount that, it, I mean, if it came into a compliance in 2019 and Mr. Khalil only recently took it over and there's not been any uh, fines under Mr. Khalil, why are we waiving, why are we <laughs> forgiving fines or, or entering into an agreement with Mr. Khalil if, if he's got no responsibility on these fines, I guess is what I'm asking. There was a foreclosure action on the property. 
And due to the foreclosure action on the property, the city attorney's office is recommending that the, the commission accept the $5,000 as there is some legal questions as to whether uh, the lien that's currently on the property would be enforceable. I mean, if, if I, I'm, I'm, not, I, I mean, I'm mumbling because I'm stumped on this one. I'm not sure I understand. And, and, um, so, and I, I mean, and I'm not, I'm, 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 in, in, I, I'm, I'm trying to get a point across that I, you know, and I've had discussions with Mr. Trask about this. And um, if it, the question was kind of come up, of course, I will answer it. But there was a foreclosure action on the property which wiped out the city's lien. Right. Trying to get while the getting is good. So you can either accept the five thousand dollars in settlement, or have the option of spending a lot in attorneys' fees to potentially go after fines and liens that are no longer collectible on the property, mm. because the city's liens have been wiped out. So that that is why the recommendation of five thousand well, dollars was but, being put. But forth. as I understand, maybe this is the the, the uh, code enforcement lien was put into effect. Mr. Yacoub took ownership under, through the foreclosure. And on the foreclosure, all the, it was subject to the mortgage, and all of the liens were wiped out subject to the mortgage. Except it didn't go into compliance until two years later. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the, it's, the lien was placed on it the day that the order was recorded with the county for the code enforcement violation. So the violation went away, not the No, not the, the, lien, the lien was extinguished. So you have the option of accepting the five thousand dollars. It gets extinguished right. at the foreclosure. The That's foreclosure fine. Right, thank no you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was I was trying to get the point across without beating it over the head. But um, yes, yeah, so you have the option of accepting the five thousand dollars settlement or potentially spending attorneys' fees on a, on a lien that's otherwise potentially unenforceable. Yeah, I, I just and I also read Mr. Gasson's memorandum, which um, he basically thought the whole thing was just a game as far as trying to get out from paying anything. So. Any other comments? I had all mine answered earlier. <laughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Vaticutis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapini? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Luzes. Thank you, Ms. Yes. Well, that concludes the regular session agenda. And we go to staff comments. Just want to remind everybody this Saturday, December 11th, our annual Christmas Day Parade is back at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, just uh, Pay attention in the morning because there'll be a lot of road closures and detour, and if you're in a hurry to get someplace, plan accordingly. We'll have route maps up on our Facebook page. Mr. Jello, any Nothing comments? Nothing from me. Well, thank you for serving with us. It's always my pleasure. Thanks. Mr. LaCourse. Well, the good news is that Manatee Village is getting ready to to do the repairs. The bad news is it almost causes a problem with setting up for the Christmas parade, but we have been able to work all that out yesterday and, and today. Um, I know we were all anxious to see that start, but um, it ended up starting and almost, um, we had to change our whole plans for the parade. So all that, some of you may have heard the inklings because I said we, we have an issue, but that issue is resolved, um, but, but but the good news is after the parade, they'll have the whole lot and everything, and uh, you'll see the renovations of that Manatee Plaza that I know we're all looking forward to. Great. Something we've been waiting for a long time. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Jacobs? I have no comments. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carr? I just want to say it's uh, always been an honor to serve with everybody, and looking forward to closing out the year with one more meeting, and looking forward to the Christmas parade this Saturday. Commission Tara Penn. No comments, Mayor. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, just something for staff to follow up on. Um, it, it can just be via email. I don't need anything tonight. I doubt there would be anything tonight. But just from uh, our actual budget that was passed, the Cops and Kids marquee board sign, uh, just an update on where that's at. Uh, and then also the $1,000 check to the Shepherd Center. Uh, if you guys recall, we, we didn't send it to the Pinellas County Homeless Leadership Board. We decided to keep it local and go with the Shepherd Center, uh, just just to reach out to them maybe and say, hey, um, you know, what, whatever that process is, when do you want your check? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Vitsikuras, comments? Um, we, we, I want to remind the 
viewers, we have a CRA meeting right after this too. Yeah, and, and so the comments, um, I, I, so far it's been a great Christmas, all the festivities and everything, and, and um, I think it's been relatively safe and, and I don't, haven't heard of any major, major um, um, issues, but I know we've had a couple of unfortunate deaths during this time too, which has been very sad. So um, I just hope everybody remains safe during this holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like everyone to know that uh, January 7th, 2022, day after the Epiphany, we will have the, uh, we're going to finalize the second phase of our sister city training with the city of Hanya, uh, with, with Tarpa Springs, and uh, I keep you updated as, as the progress goes on right now. We haven't finalized the, uh, the schedule yet, so when it becomes available, we'll make sure everybody knows about it. Well, that, con that concludes the regular session meeting. It's adjourned at 9.26 p.m. And we're going to the CRA. And I'm calling the uh, order of the CRA meeting of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, December 7th, 2021 at 9.27 p.m. Roll call, please. Chair Alahuzas. Here. Vice Chair Carr. Here. Commissioner Terrapenny? Here. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Commissioner Vadikiotis? Here. We have one item on the agenda. This is the resolution 2021-03 Forum Your Grant <coughs> Program. City Attorney, please read the resolution. Resolution number 2021-03, a resolution of the Community Redevelopment Agency establishing a CRA photo mural grant, establishing application and guidelines for the administration of the grant, and establishing an effective date. Thank you. Well, this is similar or the, the same as the item 14 that we discussed earlier, yeah. except that it comes from a different budget. So, Ms. Lemos, anything yeah. you want to share with us? Um, again, it's the photo mural grant program. You have the guidelines in the process. Um, we have a, a CRA grant line item that has $100,000 currently in the budget. Okay. Are there any public comments on this item? Thank you. Um, the chair will contain a motion. So moved. Second. Any comments? Here none. Roll call, please. Commissioner Vadikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Chair Carr? Yes. Chair Lewis's. Well, that concludes the uh, CRA agenda. Uh, are there any staff comments? <laughs> we had that. Any commission? Any commission comments? Thank you, I've got no. a quick one, real quick, Mayor. You do? Yeah, a, a quick question for staff. Um, Mark, is it? Are we going to see um, anything different with the Forbes property coming before us? Are we opening up the application process, or are we just going to say, oh, thank you. what's planned for that for the end of well, this year or early next year? We're we kind of holding be, because of the material. We were just holding back because to put out something now with all the costs of construction materials and stuff, we didn't feel it was. Okay. You know, I've got I've got at least two people reaching out to me with interest on it. So I, I would get them because if there is and there is that interest there to get them with Karen, because if there is, that would change the that would change the dynamics of us going forward with that. If there was someone. OK, because my understanding was that if if someone wants to bring an application, when I talk to the city attorney about it, if they could bring an application forward, they could present it to the CRA and then the, the city could advertise for 30 days. Yes. If there's anybody Correct. else that's interested, they could also bring an application forward also during that time. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, that concludes the uh, CRA meeting and it's adjourned at 9.29 p.m. Good night, everybody. Don't go away. We got to sign this guy. Thanks.